idea is that you're a threatening mate on G7. And if the pawn takes, you're open up the street. Oh, my God! Yes! Let's go! The board. Congratulations! <laughs> oh, my God. So if pawn takes, this bishop is joining the attack and taking on H7. If the knight takes, the pawn on H7 is hanging and she just resigned. Oh, my God. This knight H5 is, will be a brilliant move, I guess. Or knight, yeah, knight G5, right? Knight G5, which would will force queen F6, and now finally she takes the pawn. Yay, she did. <laughs> and if uh, if knight F7 here, I guess we have rook, we have rook to E7. That, that seems like a bone cruncher. And there it is, Kostinuk resigned. What I mean, another, I mean, another absolutely stunning game um, by White. Oh wait, oh. roller coaster. It is, because if you take, you have a big problem over here. She has to play passively now to defend and... I mean, H5. No. Oh, no! oh my goodness. Queen of four? I oh, know, queen of four, then capture and capture see, on H4. you H4. want to make a trade of queens or not? That's the question. No. No, I would keep... I would prefer to keep queen this queen knight. Point. Yeah. Queen because two, see, knight, over. yeah game over and it's not a stalemate the bishop is still wow. alive what a game you... oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but there is there is 96 chuck then winning the queen so yeah yeah that, that was one. also good that also looks very very promising rook takes g2 oh. queen takes a fourth that was a blunder okay that oh, was no. a blunder how is not possible uh, to stop the checks oh that's no a... this oh, is... my, 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 my. Oh, i was scared I was scared because my shiny made the move on the last, last seconds. Hi guys, welcome to the finals of the Women's Speed Chess Championship right here on chess.com. My name is Irina Crush and I'm joined by chess queen Alexandra Kostenyuk and we're here to bring you uh, a super exciting match between Hao Yifan and Katarina Logno. Hello everyone. That should be very, very exciting. Let's have a look at the road these players took uh, to get to the final. These roads were quite challenging for some. I remember that Katerina Lagno had a very, very close match against Humpy Conoru that was really decided uh, on the last, uh, in the last games. And we can say the same about Hu Yifan, who actually miraculously won against Valentina Gunina after such a bad start. She was losing almost zero to five or something like that. We commented with Irina and it was an incredible match. Yeah, I mean, definitely three tough matches. And I would say their, their uh, most recent matches were definitely uh, the hardest for them. Uh, how you find being here is a bit, you know, a bit of a surprise given how her match against Gunina was going. Uh, but she clawed it out. And Katarina Lagno, also a very difficult match against Humpy Conero. And she... Um, she also made her way to the finals. Um, and in terms of prize money, these players uh, earned already more than $11,000 uh, on their way here, actually very similar amounts. Uh, part of their prizes were based on percentage of games won, so they actually performed very similarly. Kater Katarina Logdo is um, maybe around 30, 30 or so dollars ahead. Um, and they will be playing for a prize fund of $12,000 today, $6,000 to the winner of the match, and another $6,000 to be split by win percentage. Yes, definitely um, quite a prize fund to fight for. Uh, these uh, two players, they're both very strong and very experienced. Uh, let's have a look at the insights of uh, their encounters and what uh, what do statistics say about uh, possibilities uh, of the outcome of their match? Yeah, so this is uh, their statistics from playing on chess.com, blitz-rated games. We have 181 games by How You Fun, a lot more by Katarina Logno. Um, accuracy is very similar. Uh, win percentage a little higher for Katarina. Loss by flag also a bit higher for How You Fun. Um, but looking at their uh, individual matchups um, in the database, 
Alexandra. I would say they're actually, um, it's a, it's a toss up this match. Right, right. It should be pretty close. I'm not uh, sure I haven't checked on the database uh, on their over the board ga games, how um, they played against each other, but I believe it should be pretty equal. I mean, if I would say something about 50%. Yep. And um, well, we can have a look at the smarter chess stats, um, but again, I think it's based mostly on uh, online games, which are a little bit different, uh, but well, these players are going to play online today. So uh, we should uh, take into consideration their online uh, games and online encounters. Uh, uh, I saw Katerina playing in title Tuesday this week. Actually, she did pretty well. She scored eight points out of 11. So wow. quite, uh, yeah, quite... Uh, <laughs> Quite a lot. result. <laughs> yeah. Well, I must say, in general, Katerina is more active uh, than who you find, at least in uh, like official, let's say, online tournaments. So I see her playing regularly in title Tuesdays. And while who you find, well, I rarely see her play. But again, I expect uh, I expect a very close match. And let's hope that the tension is going to be high till the very last seconds, uh, similar to the match. Uh, between uh, that we commentated together between Hoi Fan and uh, Valentina Gunina. Um, yeah. Um, well, I would say, you know, how she is the higher rated player, but definitely Katarina is the more active player, right? And so I know she's also very good in blitz. So that's what makes this uh, such a toss up. It's just very hard to uh, to pick a favorite here. Well, even if we talk about uh, a rating, I'm not sure that, yes, Hoi Fan is, uh, of course, has. Um, like a higher rating in uh, uh, classical chess, but definitely Katerina, she's been a, she was a world bliss champion, I think three times. Yeah. Uh, Hoyefani also participated in some of this uh, world championships when Katerina won. So again, it it's not going to be easy for Hoyefani and um, we'll see how the match uh, gonna progress it should be very i mean i'm very very excited about this match uh what what is your prediction how do you think who, who's gonna win yeah okay <laughs> so who's gonna win <laughs> right yeah i was hoping not to have to make a prediction um yeah okay i'm gonna bet on how you fun i don't i don't know why i said that um given what we've seen it's just an intuitive i guess at this point i don't think that like based on anything i've seen it's uh too big of a difference, but I guess what maybe what makes me say so is like if she could win that kind of bad match against Gunina, mm -hmm. like it was so bad for her, right? Like she was down by like five points, and and then she still brought it and still managed to win. So if she can pull that out. I guess she has a lot of playing, you know, playing strength reserve in her, um, even if things don't go well. So and I just feel like a lot of it was kind of form, right? Maybe she'll be a little like that match wasn't too long ago, about a week ago. So maybe um, you know she's still going to be. Uh, feeling like the form from that recent event. Right, but I see that the match uh, has uh, already officially started and we see a very classical opening. Well, I mean, relatively classical. It's a, a Rui Lopez, but with Bishop C5, right? Also known, at least in the uh, Russian-speaking community, as uh, uh, Archangelsk variation. I'm not sure how it's called in English, but Katerina um, is uh, very experienced in this um, line. She often uses it, but Bishop C5 in this particular um, case um, led us to a close through Lopez, right? Where White mm -hmm. played D3. It doesn't, D4. Yes, right. it doesn't mean they don't want to play D4. They do want to play D4, maybe not just immediately. So they do play D3, they protect the pawn on E4, and then after knight D2, rook E1, knight F1, they still, I mean, have this D4 move always in their mind, so D4 is always a move to consider here. Yeah, um, so first of all, I'm not so surprised by the opening. This would have been <laughs> one of the things that I, you know, looking through their past games, this is one of the things that quite easy to predict. Um, I think in only one of their games, Alexandra, did Katarina try a Sicilian against e4 hmm. and the rest of their games have been e4 e5 when uh, Katarina has been 
black. So, and yes, I did notice she likes to play this our Hangiluska variation. <laughs> I'm trying to get that out, right? Um, right. So it's not, not, not a very surprising opening. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, now pawns look quite uh, interestingly for black. She just pushed a5, right? It's not, mm -hmm. usually you don't see these pawns uh, moving up on the uh, queen side quite early because, yes, yeah, they're easily attacked after a5. You can expect a4, and that's exactly what Hoifan did. But again, yes, in this kind of lines after a4, you always have to be ready uh um to see e takes d4 night before and it's a very like concrete uh line and uh, black is going to attack now white center the pawn on e4 uh somehow mm, white on the other hand will try to um well to yes to yeah. keep this move is going to happen, isn't it? Rook a3. <laughs> yes. It I looks think like. it's it going to happen. <laughs> it always reminds me of this um, Karslan Anand game in one of their world championship match where he just transferred his rook while the third rank in uh, also in Rui Lopez, just rook a3, rook g3, and somehow Anand couldn't find a good defense uh, against this maneuver. Yeah, I mean, so white has lost a pawn. Now, this bishop is unlikely to move anytime in the near future. On the other hand, white does have a strong center, right? Nicely developed pieces, quite centralized. Of course, when I showed this type of rook lift, well, that's very difficult to do given all the pieces on the third rank. But rook a3 was just stopping uh, the knight from coming to d3. And so Katarina goes c5. Well, what about d5? It's the kind of the first, first move that comes to my mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, always for me, it's always hard to say how to change uh, the pawn structure, right? Because when you play d4, d5, well, that's it. There is no more tension uh, in the center, whether it's good or bad. Very hard to evaluate because, yeah, it's double edged always, right? First, uh, at one hand, d5 here looks good because it kind of cuts off the knight uh, on b4 from the play. It's, mm -hmm. it's not coming to c6 anymore at all. Well, yeah, white has this plan with bishop f4, knight h2, and rook g3, exactly. And we know when the uh, center is closed, uh, this kind of attacks, they start to be more uh, dangerous. Yeah. Way. You know what I think, Alexandra, is um, I know this is beautiful congregation of pieces on the queen side. Now, there might be just a little too many of them hanging out there. Um, right. because there, it's actually very hard for those pieces to then transfer over to the king side in case white does launch some play there. And definitely, you know, white's bishop is on the queen side, but it's pointing at the king side. The rook is on the queen side, but it can get to the king side. So I do see more potential in white's position here. Um, unless, I mean, like, what can black really do on the queen side? This kind of move, um, you know, well, it kills the bishop on b5, and you're, you're not really going anywhere with the pawn, but I guess maybe Katarina actually does want to do something like c4 and knight c5 and knight d3. Yeah, but after c4, that means that this pawn is not is no longer protected by the... <laughs> yeah, we see mosquitoes flying. Yeah, and um, by the pawn on d6, and that means that white can just switch, you know, to basically trying to win all those uh, weak pawns a5 a4 c4 those pawns they are not i mean we can just simply mm. start capturing them and forget about attacking on the king side but rather oh. start our play on the queen side one day she maybe she put the queen here because she wants to do a sack there at some point also because she wants to go knight yeah. c4 right yeah Knight of one or, also yeah. can be played in bishop h6. Yeah, it's some kind of multifunctional move, right? Queen c1. Yeah. Uh, looking at the uh, c4 square, but at the same time heading actually to h6. So quite a poisonous move. Uh, yeah, I rather uh, like it. I mean, I like how the queen from c1 can just do so much. I do wonder what she wants to do with her knight. Okay, so Katarina, interesting move. Queen f6. She hits b2 pawn, so maybe if you want to play knight c4, you have to take that into account that there's bishop c4, queen c4, and you might lose that pawn in the end. And of course, the other point is that she's uh, defending that pawn, so I like queen f6. 
and also protecting the square on d4 because for example after knight f1 c4 i think that's her intention the d4 square is kind of protected and she's ready to play knight d3 right to mm -hmm. uh, close uh, white rook on a3 bishop b mm. on b1 so many many ideas after the c4 mm -hmm. Very interesting move by how you fawn too. I mean, I kind of like how both of these players are playing. It's a prophylactic move against this C4 plan because really C4 is the main idea that Black has. Like there's not a whole lot of counterplay for Black other than that. She needs to try to use these pieces on the queen side, get that square. So how you fawn playing Rook C3 is, um, is quite smart in, uh, in my opinion. Uh -huh, but Black plays C4 anyway. Anyway, and now we have to relate what's going to happen after bishop takes b6, knight takes b6, mm -hmm. in case of bishop takes b6, yeah. knight takes b6, e5, for example. Okay, that's mm -hmm. another story. She just simply captured on c4. And now okay. some kind of version of, of this move. Maybe take e5. e5. E5 is always in the air. If mm -hmm. you play knight c5, I think you should be ready for e5. Yep, that is going to be an overload on the pawn that could be unpleasant. The queen doesn't have a whole lot of squares. Okay, so she trades, rook takes. Yeah, well, now, now the rook is doing a good job of covering these squares. Knight c5, there's still e5. But okay, I mean, I still wouldn't say that black's position is so bad. Um, there seems to be some... Okay, I don't know about this move. It's a little sad to have to put the knight there. Well, rook c8, probably she wants to... Trade yeah. on the C file. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. But still, this knight makes me sad. <laughs> like somehow it's not, this is not where it's supposed to be. Yeah, those knights are very sad looking. And it's, it's funny because if you draw this an imaginary line, you know, on the D file, all uh, minor pieces, black mm, minor pieces mm. are on the queen side. Do you think there's any idea of like, I just, uh, I know, what about like... queen takes H6 now? Ah, oh, is that a free pin? pawn? Yeah. yeah and then yeah, 95. I don't know. G6 was a little bit. Uh... Yeah, I didn't even pay attention to that. This was a huge blunder. Okay. Um, no, wow. Queen takes B2, I think, was in, in uh, the intentional, uh, I mean, the idea, yeah. but then she realized that knight G5 might happen and just. Yeah, then, then she was hitting that pawn as well in F7, right? Because it's not just uh, the mate with Queen H7, it was also the F7 pawn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now. Uh huh. She'll just go back queen d2, won't she? Yeah, seems so. e5 doesn't bring anything, just gives up a pawn. And maybe it's not that bad, you know, queen and two knights, they might uh, mm. create something out of nothing at some point. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's still these two pawns on the board. Are they, if she, I mean, it's all about this pawn. If she, uh, mm -hmm. if she loses that pawn somehow, then I would say black would be doing quite well. But Katarina, okay, she has twice less time. Now they're in a really critical time situation phase. Of course, right. White's bishop doesn't look very impressive on b1. Yep. So I'm always, I'm trying, you know, I'm checking e5, this e5 possibilities all the time, but for mm. the moment, uh, they don't seem to bring. Anything. Yeah. You know, why White's not like just totally winning here is, I mean, this bishop's not great and she, she's having trouble finding a plan, actually. And Quite you see obvious. those knights, they're jumping. I mean, <laughs> And yeah, the time is equal now. now they're yeah, now they're just equal on time, and it's gonna be who's got the stronger nerves and the time pressure. Mm -hmm. And faster mouse. <laughs> faster mouse, better, better hand-eye coordination. Yeah. Yeah, reaction. I, see, I'm terrible in this part. This is the part where I definitely do the worst. Okay. So she just mm -hmm. blundered a pawn. Oh man, she just B2 maybe, and she, she maybe yeah. she's taken on B2 and uh started pushing that pawn. Well, now black is just Okay, maybe not. Knight c5, no, wonderful, wonderful she. Uh, yeah. But definitely black is a sort of playing initiative. I, I don't know if you can call it that. They're, yeah, you can call it's it It's harder that. for white. It's harder for white to play. It's hard, exactly, because queen and knight. Oh, no, 91. She's missing the fourth. 91, yeah, but three times in a row because it's three-fold repetition. Oh, man, that's so funny. <laughs> that's so funny. Yes, well, that happens. Ah, 91, several times. Well, wow, Katarina, always look for checks, right? Queen, you should yeah. look for checks. Mm. Okay, okay, now we find it's playing black. Okay, yeah. what's what's going to happen here? So Sicilian by how you fawn is not a surprise, which I'm really happy about because I guess we will see a lot of Sicilians. You know, it's one. It's like 
well, one of my favorite openings for Black, and I'm happy we have someone here who's willing to play it. Um, so she goes for the Night Orb. It's not the only Sicilian she can play. She can play E6 Sicilians. I think she yeah, can play she's classical. playing Shivin and Gin and Paulson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she's playing all. But we transpose to kind of Shivin and Gin Paulson mm -hmm. setup where White actually is going to castle long. Yeah. So some kind of mixture, Night Dwarf Paulson mixture, a very sharp one, I suppose. Yeah. So this is, let's say, um, okay, I guess I, I would consider these moves to be normal, but yeah, 97. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, you know, what's another thing is can you break with d5 at some point? Yeah, but here e5, right? Yeah, I don't probably not, I'm not yet. Sure. Okay, so she goes knight c6. Well, now at some point, you gotta take looks at bishop takes b5, b5. Mm -hmm. yeah, bishop takes b5, yeah, mm -hmm. because the difference actually is that the pawn is on a3. It's yes. very big compared with the same position with the pawn on a2. Not only b4 can be played, but after bishop takes b5, for example, bishop e7, I think is a mistake here because bishop takes mm -hmm. b5, then knight takes b5, knight takes d6, and the pawn on a2 is not hanging. Yeah, very important, right? What will it she do about this? Aha, uh -huh. so she doesn't wait for that sack to happen. All right. Pawn takes, knight takes. Looks fun. But Katerina is playing very fast. So she's still in her uh, opening preparation, I think. Mm -hmm. she, um, because it's already like one minute difference, right? Between yeah. Katerina and Hoi Fan. Or maybe, After you know, I, I don't even know like if, how much of this is opening. Well, may maybe it is. I, I would also not be surprised if just, just like simply by her instinct, she's playing these moves. Because so far, White's moves have been pretty typical. Um... I mean, I don't even well, I don't when know we how, talk about yeah. Katerina, I think in Katerina's case, it's the opening preparation. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know better. If I, if I would, you know, be playing white, then it would be more of uh, like instinct, intuition, G4, G5, H4, yeah. what else to expect. But in her case, I think, yeah, she was preparing this line. Oh, interesting. Okay. All righty. So H4 and, well, on one hand, it looks like Black is sort of advanced in their queenside play, having played B4, opens up the B file, put the knight here. The same time, well, in a way, you kind of wish there was a bishop on B4, but that's not what we have, right? And knight C5, are there any tricks? Well, there's always tricks when their king is lined up, and who knows, maybe something can happen on the square one day but for now nothing is really oh yeah like here in a5 right Queen yeah. a5 mm -hmm. let me show you a tactic yeah. alexandra yeah. Yes. <laughs> like i just i just spotted one of those my, my rare moments when i see something um like if we if imagine this knight wasn't here see right. like if we played e5 and the knight was forced to move mm -hmm. and then we went like knight a2 and then knight b3 right yeah you see that's kind of cool right so that's square Very. on b3 yeah, it's actually kind of important. And that's probably why Katerina played King B1, right? Just exactly. out of all this uh, tactical motives, just in case, just it better yeah, save yeah, yeah. them. That's sorry. definitely a good a good instinct. When when there's too many squares like that that are vulnerable, you want to uh, get out of those forks. All right. A5. Wow, mm. that kind of surprises me. I don't know. Mm. I expected the move like Rook B8, for example. Okay, so now I know one thing. I always blunder in the Sicilian. Mm -hmm. Alexander, I'll tell yes, you. Yes, good always, to know. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you this uh, secret. Um, one thing I always kind of miss for Black that's easy to miss, I think, is like some sort of knight of five move, right? Like, yes. where, where there's some, where there's like this uh, attack on the bishop, some overload on this pawn. I feel like sometimes it's from far away, it could be easy to miss such a move. And um, I wonder if those ideas are present here. I mean, it kind of feels like there could be something, or. or or maybe she'll play just like here, five. for example, yeah. knight f5. Exactly, it's, it's possible, but I believe uh, maybe rook d8 or something. Uh -huh. I don't know. Rook some d8. Counter attack. You know, or even if, uh, if if castles, what happens on castles? Is there? Some... Well, the knight takes c7. I don't know. Then I like uh, white's position. Uh huh. For some reason, maybe I'm wrong <laughs> because I'm not really I'm not very good in evaluating those attacks. You see, knight f5. Uh, hmm. uh, is on the board. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if rook d8, knight takes g7, king f8 was my intention, and bishop a2 is kind of a threat. But then rook d8, I can play queen c3, 
right? It doesn't look very good, the rook there. Yeah, I mean, I guess the one move that black is not going to play there is pawn takes knight. Because what about short, he, uh, long side yeah. castle here? Long side castle <laughs> looks interesting. I mean, Yeah, but then yeah. knight takes c 7 and queen c 3 I think. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. But game over. Yeah, white's king is pretty safe. So, I mean, I think, like, okay, if they take, we're very happy with the queen in the center, then this is getting hit. So this move is not going to happen. Um, so I do think castles looks quite plausible, right? Okay, rook d8. Okay, apparently not a very good move, but we need to figure out why. Is it just something simple? Queen like I didn't like queen c3. c3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knight takes g7, and then queen c3 looks very right. I mean, it actually looks unpleasant. completely winning because you're mm -hmm. just threatening knight takes e6, and exactly. you're gonna hit the rook, mm -hmm. right? So why in the world did how you find just give up that pawn? Well, we don't know. Um, it doesn't seem like a good idea because I mean the rook is out of action, the king is weak. Even knight h5 here, just something simple. Is... No, maybe g6. G6. Okay, wow. Well, uh, just playing, you know, when you commentating, yeah. you can allow yourself kind of because rook g7, bishop h6, and then f6, g takes h7. Well, okay. Well, g6, rook takes, and uh, what, what did we say? Bishop h6. h6, and then we just f6. Ah, and here you're queening. But your king f7, king still. F7, the, the, yeah. the king f7, it's not over. I cannot give a check on h5, unfortunately. The pawn is still on f3, but, but. Anyway. Okay, it's... so she played this one. Yeah. yeah. G6, G6 was very interesting. G6 is like one of those things, yeah. Your yeah, but Katerina is a very practical player. I don't even think she considered it in a Blitz game. She just, you know, Yeah. moved uh, her knight out of uh, this attack and uh, kept all the advantages in her position that she has. Exactly. Bishop it's D4, probably Bishop would G7. Be my, would be my plan. Um... Just get the bishop there. The knight f6 knight is also a threat, no? Knight f6 here. Yeah. Of no yeah. black. Well, I hope this doesn't. Wrong. I hope this doesn't discourage how from to playing play Sicilian. <laughs> I mean, it's not a good start, but you know, I feel like she can do better than this. But she, I mean, it felt uh, well. Her position looked uh, pretty good before her d5 move. I didn't like her d5. Uh, Mm, you didn't like you didn't like this know. idea. No, I didn't know yeah. why why to open yeah, up the Yeah, probably just castles, right? Or again, rook b8. I'm not sure yeah. what's black ideas are here. Yeah. Castle, it's always double edged. It feels for me at least that uh, white's attack is a little bit more advanced. I go h5. Like g6 maybe. Uh, g6 right away. Just, I don't know. But again, it's yeah, still better. Maybe, yeah, G6 is interesting. I mean, I could go bishop f6. Yeah, but... that's true. Anyway, we come back to our position where white is totally winning. Mm -hmm. And here she goes. She gets the dark squared bishop. And okay, just just pawn takes, right? Or Bishop takes c5. It's also... Yeah, bishop c5. I guess we can trade. It's a little boring. Well, bishop that's what's happening. Five. I'm I'm sorry, oh, but yeah. this is exactly <laughs> what's happening. Okay, so because she's also oh she's not so boring. Okay, there we go. That's that's actually not boring at all. It looks uh, like she's winning a piece here, and yeah, that's it. Wow, pretty crushing game by Katarina. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That that can happen, right? And all those open Sicilians, if uh, Black uh, somehow leaves the king in the center, that can arrive. Yeah, I had, you know, I had a game in the Olympiad that reminds me, Alexandra. So it was my worst game of the Olympiad where I lost, like, I don't know, or I was essentially lost after about 10 to 15 moves because I made this misjudgment in some forcing line to leave my king in the center. And that king just was not able to get out. It was such a big mistake. So, yeah, that is really similar to this game by, uh, by how. Yeah, I have some similar experience when I used to play this uh, Rouser with Black. Mm -hmm. uh, um, at at some point, I decided to play Kinky Seven. I yeah. thought that it's a very smart idea to play Kinky Seven, then bring my H Rook like directly to B Eight and C Eight and play King of Eight. For some reason, it felt very very uh, smart. But then after Kinky Seven, Knight D Five check, the game was practically over. So yeah, I also have this kind of sad experience. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess if you play the Sicilian long enough, you usually experience all these ideas. 
Mm -hmm. um all right so what do we got here we got a repetition of yep, their same. first game um mm -hmm. it so far looks yeah very similar are there even any differences well um a5 no they just uh, copying their first game mm, well how a4 how, yeah oh uh, okay no a4 by by white in this game Actually, I liked uh, the position that uh, Hui Fang got in her first game. Yeah. Yes, that's true that knight went to b4 after e4, e takes d4, c takes d4. But at the same time, after the c5, d5 that happened, right? The knight was like, stuck there. Okay, but uh, Hui Fang mm. changes a little bit. Mm. Oh, wait, does she need to exchange yeah because um, apparently it's, not <laughs> interesting that it's so interesting that what black is allowing that trade because you would think that uh, that's not really a good pawn structure for black and i that's so weird so i see the eval bar is kind of okay with this position for black but there must be something tricky here alexandra because this cannot be like normal to have these kinds of pawns and have to capture like away from the center right so oof a3 b4 okay. is automatic I mean, this pawn is such a weakness. Yeah, it is. I thought uh, when she played uh, C takes B6, uh -huh. I thought that Black's plan is connected with Rook C8, Rook C5, you know, protecting the pawn like this. Uh -huh. But not anymore. I, I'm not sure what Black is going to do with all those weaknesses on the queen side. B5, A3, like potentially are they're going to be lost. Uh -huh. Rook B3, Knight B1, Knight A3, Knight B5. I mean, what to do again, this kind of a plan? It's slow, but... Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. That's that's what. Yeah. All in G five. Uh, then knight. Uh, I don't know where. Good H seven. H five. H seven probably. And then yeah. H five. I G4. even kind of thought it's like maybe in this position you could try a little bit of prophylaxis. I don't know how exactly we're gonna. So I was thinking about bishop f one and maybe here could we do something more useful than rook b one to try to get rid of this knight? Because I really wish I could play this move, but maybe not. Like maybe we're not. Maybe we're not fast enough if Black wants to go for this. So it was kind of tricky to to stop the counterplay. But G5 I like by Katarina because, well, when your position is lost, you just got to attack, right? Well, does it uh, <laughs> actually, is it lost? That yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it's like it's lost on the queen side. <laughs> okay, yes, that's true. It's some kind of very similar to King's Indian uh, structures, right? Exactly. Where Black just says uh, goodbye to her queen side and focuses on the king side and yep. since katerina she also plays king's indian so mm -hmm. she's uh, very experienced in this kind of desperate situations where you yeah. must do something on one side of the board yeah well no i do i do actually like her position because unfortunately something went wrong here like with these moves it's going to take too long to win that pawn and um well okay what's the i mean i suppose it's just g4 is already a pretty annoying threat pawn well, or not yeah. i don't know i mean it's very of course unpleasant when uh, your king is under attack especially mm -hmm. in the blitz game and it feels like playing knight h2 <laughs> straight away here just to you know to secure this uh, to take under control this g4 square mm -hmm. to stop the attack for the moment the problem is that she can never challenge this knight. I mean, this knight is sort of the basis for the attack. Okay, so Katarina goes king h7. Uh, nice. Okay, she's going to go rook g8. And then either h5 or g4 directly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely am not so worried about, like, these pawns. It just it doesn't feel very important here. Yeah, who knows? Maybe even c4 should be considered here. Okay, forget about these pawns, but... Just the problem is after c4 with the rook on b3, b takes c4, and then bishop a4 might <laughs> might be quite um, an unpleasant idea. So how does white prepare for this attack? What do we do? Oof. And it's like, I really wish I could use, yeah, I could use the rook. Rook e3? Rook e3, knight e1? Uh -huh. <laughs> Something That's like this. That's interesting. That's interesting. I mean, the problem is, uh -huh, rook e3, but on g4, okay. Okay, she, she plays nice h2, yes. That's quite uh, quite logical. Mm, so... And she can plan, uh, she can, for example, rook g8, rook e3, she can always play. It. Because after g4, I want to have h4, right? Mm, and that's if I idea. manage to play h4 and close the king side by playing h4, g3, that would be great. 
course. It's dreams. Mm -hmm. Dreams. So she's trying to put her pawn here, yes, probably. Yes, exactly. But okay, when she plays h4, then the, I still have, yeah, I can play f3. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it closes the, the king side. Yeah, it's a bit ugly for the pawn structure, but it has its points. But yeah, I like I like h5. So much harder for how to be playing this position. Um, Queen c1. Again, this multi multifunctional move. Yep, that's the trademark so far uh, in this match. So now, uh huh, c4. So she did prepare c4 at the end. Yeah, interesting. I like it. Yeah, c4 is good. I mean, I definitely like the third rank being open for the rook. And so it's mm -hmm. a question. So what is she going to do? Is Katarina, how about just h4? Maybe c5. One, c5 even. Yeah, trying to break through. Mm hmm. Interesting. Well, C oh. takes B5 also should be considered, of course. I don't see... Yeah. Well, my uh, idea was like H4, C mm -hmm. takes B5, and maybe just... G4. Oh, yeah. Okay, but it's not a checkmate yet. Even after that, right? I can try yep. to survive. H takes G4, Knight takes G4, Knight mm -hmm. takes G4, Bishop takes G4, and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we're going to get to see this, which is... Right. Cool. But what about F3? Is F3 even an option here? Yeah, just to, just to like give our... Uh, viewers the instructive points you know the most important thing when you're attacking guys is to have open lines so mm -hmm. if you go directly for this move definitely white would jump on the chance to close up the, the the king side right alexandra mentioned this idea earlier and then they go g3 and actually you're not going to get mated so you see when you're attacking you need to pay attention to these details and that's why she pushes this pawn first to h4 because now when she goes g4 you won't be able to close up the file okay but we're expecting to see g4 right we yeah. probably, yeah, we're expecting to see that. Um, so you think she's just going to leave this pawn alone? Don't yeah. not bother at all with it. Yeah, no, I, because I time is very important here. Yeah, and she does go for g4. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, so, so far her attack is, um, is going very smoothly, I would say. Look at that beautiful knight. When you have a knight like that, you can do a lot. <laughs> you can do a lot of attacking. Yeah, and what to do next for white? White needs to make a move. And well, I mean, this is a big threat, so I suppose we have to at least take ones. How big is it? No, I'm just trying to figure mm. out, like, if I play, for example, King H1. Yeah. Is it very bad? Is it <laughs> bad or very bad? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's even ideas like that that are going to happen, man. Well, eventually, yes. But again, it, it, yeah. I was thinking maybe I can play knight f3 and just protect everything. Yeah, wow. Okay. But I mean, it's, it's very it's scary. Hard. It's very, yeah. I, I mean, I really don't envy White's task here. And she's a deep in thought, getting down to 30 seconds. But the problem is not even the time. It's also just the position that is so dangerous. And combined with the lack of time, it's going to be hard C6. for her. C6. Well, but what bishop C8? Yeah. It doesn't solve any, any problems, right? Right. It okay. seems like it doesn't, but OK. So Who she knows? takes, knight takes. So I guess knight takes. Knight takes. I mean, you would think that you want to trade an attacking knight like that, right? I guess you can try something else, but c7, yeah. queen c6. Maybe that was uh, who finds uh, idea. But but you know the problem is the queen's coming out somewhere. Knight so, f3. Uh, oh, rook <laughs> doubling the rook on the okay. third. He wants rank. to give up the ex exchange. He's just dying to get some pieces off the board, even if it means losing a bit of material. But I think, I mean, she can take it and go queen g5, right? You don't have to be shy about taking the material. Yeah, Katerina likes taking material. Why not? Not not to mention that move. She can take a second exchange if she wants. And again, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't seem very good for who you find. She wasn't able to create any counterplay. And uh, black succeeded. Knight h3, okay. knight f2. I mean, doesn't look good. Yeah, I would definitely go and grab that pawn. And then, yeah. And then What is she looking at? Is there a queen sack? Um... No, I think she's just uh, calculating further. Knight f3, knight f2, king g1. What uh, What's next? And then, yeah, so maybe queen, queen g3. Mm -hmm. queen That's g3 exactly what she here. was thinking about. Yeah, so now what to do with the hanging queen and the hanging knight? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, queen g3. 
and that yes. something should happen here. Something should be working out for Black, right? Knight takes five. Three, maybe knight takes a five. Ah, knight knight h three and queen f two was a very dangerous yeah. threat, I think. Yeah, and and it still it still is right. We can still do it if we want, and then get out with the knight to g four. That's but... true. Actually, queen f two here. Ah, queen f two here. G takes oh, it. Okay, it's getting okay. kind of sharp, actually. Now it's not clear anymore. Yes, it's completely playing on seconds. Wow. Yes. Oh it's man, don't lose on time. Oh no. Oh no. At the point where White almost survived, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. White kind Just of surviving, but it was the first time in the games they had uh, great chances, and ah, uh, no. Yeah, oh, too bad about that. All right, um, so we're getting the same Sicilian opening. So what is the score, Alexandra? It two is and a half, two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah, but so we kind get. of used it, Hoya Fania, in the yeah, two last matches. She's not starting well, so she's kind of warming up still. Still right. time to warm up. You know, I, there's, I, I don't think there's any point in which I'm going to think it's hopeless for her because after I saw the last match, I just don't know if, it, you know, even if she loses a bunch of games in a row, you know, having seen that match, you know that there's still a, a hope. Yeah, there is always a hope and uh, people tend to get tired, right? And thus uh, make more mistakes. Uh, but anyway, anyway. Did she play the same line? uh in the first game was it exactly the same because it's already now we're in something different yeah all right so. now the rook is coming under threat unfortunately you don't have time for bishop b7 because of e5 being a problem so it does rook a7 also doesn't yeah. seem to be. probably she played b5 and too uh, early in the first right? game queen so, c7 i think was played right e6 because it does feel very early to play b5 and I right. mean, there are some lines where um, Black plays e b5 very early, but yeah. Wow, she can be in big trouble like that from mm -hmm. uh, playing like that from the opening. So now, um, okay, you you can't really play e5 probably, right? Or because pawn gets captured, and I guess I get a little too much material. But pretty normal move here is knight a4. What what do you think? Yeah, Queen C7, I just checked. Queen C7 happened in the first Sicilian game. Queen C7, Queen D2, and then B5. And here we're in uh, on a different territory. So B4, right, in this game. Uh, well, what to do here? What to do? Yeah, so she's thinking where this... Ah, I would also go. think <laughs> e 5 it might be an oh, idea. Oh, wow. So I was thinking it's not possible. Like, so what happens on pawn takes? What's the idea? Uh, bishop takes... Uh, bishop takes the rook. I take... He takes d4. I mean, I get two pieces for the Maybe knight c6 was uh, the idea. Knight c6 and you... Uh, queen takes d1, rook takes d1, knight d7, right? So Right. Well, it's kind of complicated. I see the computer showing a big edge, but mm -hmm. it's not completely clear how to achieve it. Uh, so let's take a look. Yeah. Well, knight c6, okay, apparently that one doesn't work. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I mean, it's going up, it's going up, so it's not that bad, but Katerina yeah. already uh, played knight d to e2. Okay, knight d to e2. Well, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of, but actually... Is that really okay? Black already has these pawns. You can also they can also get the knight. Um, Tell me if we're gonna see an end game yeah. with queen takes d1, rook takes d1, b takes c3. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Black sacrificing this exchange and getting her pawn to b2. Right. Doesn't seem t so terrible. And um, by the way, you couldn't take with a knight because well, many reasons. E4. It was e4, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So you took with the rook. Pawn takes bishop a8 and cb2. So at first glance, it seems like maybe playable for black, because black does have uh, right now two pawns for the exchange. But I guess the problem is that black also has very poor development. I mean, if, if only these pieces were a little bit better developed, I think black would be doing just fine. Mm -hmm. C4. Wow. Well, maybe, maybe they'll it's still be doing fine. 
Yeah, that's a move you don't expect mm -hmm. to see is a C4 just uh, taking yeah. under control of D5 square. What is the idea? Because I would, I don't know, I would try to castle to mm -hmm. coordinate my rooks uh, because C4, I don't know, looks scary to play with the king on E1. Bishop B4 check. What do you do next? Bishop D2. And then you capture with the king and go with the king to D2. Uh, okay. That's not so bad, right? Yeah, but, but knight E4, knight F2. So. Um, ah, sorry, knight e4, yeah, bishop yeah, don't forget Oh, sorry, bishop, yes, yeah. the bishop is here, it's still alive. Yeah, maybe. All maybe. right. Um, so, bishop d7. Okay, interesting move by how. Mm -hmm. That's, this is the dream of the bishop. Or maybe, maybe just to develop as well. Or maybe to trade bishops and then develop. <laughs> so, yeah, many really, ideas many yeah, ideas exactly lots of possibilities here so now well white for, well, first step for white is winning this pawn right five look look she's mm -hmm. just moving her pawn up amazing she wants to just go and get that pawn on b2 and interesting yeah what about knight d5 hmm Mm. I kind of like also that. interesting. Yes, me too. I like it because after bishop takes d5, e takes d5, white cannot take on uh, d5 due to b1 queen. Right. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, those two pawns in the center, they are different as these pawns mm. now. Knight g4, I like it less than the Yeah, because it's just less centralizing, right? But I mean, same idea, but okay. Well, also, maybe I'll... maybe after knight d5, we would, uh, we would have seen rook b1 anyway. And knight takes c3 and we'll get the same position eventually yeah so now she's thinking actually she could take on b2 and, and she, she does, does. Mm -hmm. uh she's got these two knights under attack so what to do for yeah and after knight oh. c6 she probably would take on c6 and take... play rook b8 yeah or, or not i'm not sure actually maybe just yeah, capture on I... e3 yeah i think that's not a bad idea but yeah, uh, when you capture ah. on c6, king d7 is possible. But here, if yes. knight c6, f takes e3, bishop takes c5 is not possible due to bishop right. takes c6. And, uh, well, just the bishop on a8 is so much stronger than this knight on c6 because rook b6 is also a threat. So I think, yeah, f takes c3 will happen. Uh-huh. So she took on b2, okay. And so how is still thinking? Mm-hmm. After rook b2, yeah, kind of a big decision for her. I guess what else she can do? Well, no, I mean, this is not really a serious move, right? Bishop takes, knight c6. Mm. Yeah, I don't think so. So she's in some trouble. Yeah, because the knight is under attack on b8. You don't yeah. want white to take this since it's going to be a check. And um, what else? Uh, knight c2, right? Is another possibility. No, because how you find is still thinking, and I'm trying to figure out what moves except knight c6 black has he here, because knight takes g2 also doesn't uh, doesn't solve doesn't seem to solve all the problems. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. So she would have played knight d5. How is it different from knight g4? Yeah, that's it's what still... I'm saying. Rook b1. Mm -hmm. Right, we're still rook b1, but there are other possibilities here or not not clear mm -hmm. right like what's the difference um but okay so here we are so she's thinking wow she's again down to 30 seconds this looks yeah but what's really worse her good. position is very very unpleasant yeah well so far no katarina is looking maybe king d8 maybe she's considering no king d8 and take on b8 and there is a check on b7 after king c7 right yeah yep. it doesn't work wow I really hope she makes a move soon. She she did. Knight c6 she played. Okay. But again, why did she spend so much time? Yep. So now Katarina, we're expecting just pawn yep. takes knight and mm -hmm. leave bishop c6 for later. Yeah. That's what happens. Bishop e7. Okay. Well, now you can definitely take, put them in a pin. Oh, okay. Or you can play rook b6, I guess, is another move you can look at. Yeah, uh, because after bishop c5, rook takes c6, right? Is it? Right. Looks pretty interesting right here. 
Well, bishop takes e5 uh, should be played anyway, I think. Rook takes e6 and you capture, you give up this piece and you try to play. Because, well, come on, knight d8, c6, it's just too bad, no? <laughs> just too bad. What is this knight d8? It's... Uh... Yeah, that's kind of... Okay, back to... And then bishop f8 and we kind <laughs> of... Oh, struck. getting ready for the next game. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that look was good for her, you find. destruction. So she really hasn't found like any weak spots in Katarina's play. That's for sure. Um, so three and a half half. I think she's trying to rival her score against Gunina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She needs a couple more games to do it. <laughs> Maybe she's kind of you know. Um, first, she has a plan to put herself in a very desperate situation and then fight it back. Yeah, but. The games, they even kind of, they, they actually, you know, the, the difference is that they even, they look worse in the games against Gunina. Yes, yes, that's what I was going to say, yeah, because in Gunina, it, at least it, uh, we felt that who you find was outplaying Valentina at mm -hmm. some, in some games, but okay, in time trouble, you know, Valentina knows how to complicate things and she was just not fast enough who you find. Mm -hmm. compared to Valentina. While here, I mean, really, Katerina is just outplaying her. She doesn't have any problems with Black. Well, uh, in the first game, she did, uh, I think, have. We have the same position, by the way. A4 is still possible, and we can get the position from the first game. Ah, uh, yeah. Will she repeat? And she decides to do it. She's confident mm -hmm. enough that that game worked out well for her, and that kingside attack, that was actually a really beautiful Mm -hmm. One, um, she doesn't mind letting Howie Fawn play d5 again. So in our chat, we have Gio asking, does anyone know their historical score against each other? Have they played before? Well, they've definitely played before, guys. And actually, what I could see is their first game was in 2004, long time ago at a 2004 Olympiad when Howie Fawn was still very young. And she was 12, right? Yeah, and her rating was... 2298 on her way up to you know 2500 but wait katrina was also pretty young at that age yeah she yeah she was in in the 2400s then 2430 mm -hmm. that was that first game mm -hmm. and um and since then of course they've played a lot they played yeah, they have five years difference right so holy is 1994 and lagno is 1989 so okay when katrina was 17 at that time mm -hmm. yeah so yeah, definitely not their first encounter. Um, and they've had, yeah, very, very uh, close results over the years, I would say, I don't know, close to close to 50, 50. Mm -hmm. um, and wow, I mean, I'm a little, I'm a little surprised. We are seeing the exact, exact same line. Oh, but yeah. she's playing a little differently this time. Yeah, she, mm -hmm. she how is making some improvements. <laughs> <laughs> well, are they really improvements we're going to yeah. see in this game, right? Yeah, so she pulled the bishop back first, and instead of this having the rook here, she goes here right away. Okay. Maybe c4, c5, right? She will try to play c4, c5 yeah. as soon as possible. Yeah, well, there's not much that black can do about that plan, so I guess g5 anyway, and then c4, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so... So far, it's um, on c4, Katarina goes king h7. So she's still going to be much, very sharp. Yeah, she's still very much in the mode of that first game. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that taking this pawn looks that dangerous to me. Yeah, okay, c5 maybe um, is, is quite logical. So she's just trying to say that she has like more tempos compared to the other one. But I, I don't know, rook g8 and... Yeah, maybe. Rook it looks G8, very huh? similar, right? Well, rook g8, c takes d6, g4, I can capture on e5. And, uh, well, you know, central pawns, unless you checkmate me straight away, mm -hmm. and I don't see how, g takes h3, g3, yeah. I'm closing. The... Exactly. So you're saying, Alexandra, rook g8, pawn d6, right? Mm -hmm. And then this pawn is going to hang. Yep. Exactly. So, for example, yeah, that's the white is way faster than they were in the previous game. And mm -hmm. as black goes forward, we just take all their center pawns. This and pleasure. Then, yeah. And then we close up the file and we're not actually getting mated. Um, meanwhile, we got like an amazing center and we got an amazing C file. So mm -hmm. how you found she felt that she could go again into this line that she could just improve on her play. And we will see if this works out. I do think it's a logical strategy. So Katarina goes G4 immediately. Right. Okay. 
Okay, what to do now after g4? I mean, there are several options, right? The knight can just uh, move away to mm -hmm. h4 and h2 with the idea after g takes h3 again uh, to play g3, try to close uh, the king side like this. Mm -hmm. Khoifan decided to capture on g4. Uh -huh. So she just captured bishop takes g4, and that's the position we have. Well, c takes d6 is to be expected, I think, because yeah. I don't really see what else uh, white can do. Yes, yeah, I do know. <laughs> I notice a very beautiful square. Okay, queen, queen to b3. Three. Mm -hmm. It's a little surprising. I mean, it's not terrible. Mm. But, but knight h3 is, uh, yeah, is uh, an idea now. Yeah. Wow, did she want that to happen? Because that looks a bit scary. Man, I, I don't know about that. I, I do think, yeah, like, well, let, let's see if takes, do we still have rook g8? Well, I think, yeah, still, but then rook c7. Rook c7, yeah. So what in? And I but don't again, it's very sharp. Yeah, knight Actually, three, it's always this move, seven. yeah. Very cool position. I mean, I like the way they're playing, obviously. This makes a lot of fun for us. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, queen b3, rook g8, and now maybe g3. Can I play just g3? Can I try? I like this move, g3. Somehow it makes me feel uh safer, but maybe it's wrong. It's... No, I like g3, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, looks very solid, actually. Your bishop from f1 well, kind of covers. I don't know. For me, this looks knight solid. h5. Yeah. Who knows? It's you know, white, black is gonna continue. Yeah, but you attack. know, you always have like knight h2, and your queen can do some defending or over here. So uh, that's what I hope for. But you know, all those lines, for example, g3, knight h5, knight h2, queen h4. <laughs> She, you know, she's, she needs to play a lot faster, though, because yeah. this, this experiment is with the time is not working out so well. Like, to, like you know, they followed mostly their first game. Okay, she improved, but, like, now she's down, like, a minute and a half on the clock, and it's getting kind of critical. Wow. And it's so much harder to play when you're on the attack, even if this attack is not, uh, like, mathematically is not correct, right? But it's not about mathematics. It's not about finding the yeah. ultimate truth. It's about, uh, I mean, winning the game. And in order to win, you just need to um, quiz your opponent, to ask questions, to put pressure, and to wait for a blunder or a mistake to come. Yeah, well, first of all, I do like her actual moves on the board. So how fearless, <laughs> fearlessly, you know, uh, reacting to this move that she's like, well, there's no sack actually possible here. So I can just go ahead and take on D6. And maybe I might even get that pawn. Uh, yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, I'll same get plan. to do that. Mm -hmm. So honestly, it does look like she is defending everything well. And the queen is a very good defender, even from far away. Mm hmm well, let's see. Let's see what Katerina... What is the current position? Because Huifan is sinking again. Okay. Queen, ah, queen, queen F6, F6 was played okay. and Rook C7. All right. So very, very principled. By, yeah. Very principled play by how you fawn. Um, okay. Well, so Bishop H3. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Black needs to try... Yeah to put more pressure on the g3, mm -hmm. open up this g file, prepare for some tricks. Yeah. Um, should I just go knight h2 on that? <clears throat> Feels... After bishop h3, knight h2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I take on f1, mm -hmm. you Six. capture with a knight. Oh, no. with a knight. knight. Knight is good. Well, knight h3, uh, knight, knight knight h2. f2. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so rook f1, yeah. So we're looking at this line, guys. And okay, this move is not forced. It's just an idea. Yeah. Definitely not forced, but it seems um well, yeah, bishop takes f1. Yeah, it seems possible, but there are lots of checks. Oh, you know, I would even prefer after bishop. Actually, isn't, isn't this really annoying, Alexander? Because this square looks pretty weak. Well, then black is not risking here anything because after king g2, there's always knight f4. Yeah, then I mean, I can go to h1. Okay, knight h3. Yeah, so now queen f3. 
Yeah, now we go queen, queen f3. Yeah. Oh, queen f3. The, the attack is over, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, well, let's see what they're going to come up with. After rook yeah, still thinking. Katarina thinking. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, my God, 25 seconds she has. 27. Wow. That's exciting. She wants to double up her rooks. As simple as that. White is putting pressure on e5 now. Good idea. Yep. Let's not forget that white still has a pass pawn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Katarina yeah. just gave up uh, all her time advantage. I, I think that was like the most important thing in her position. And now she's trying to exchange queens, but in this end game. Mm. Well, no, she was not trying to exchange. <laughs> she was just trying to grab one pawn. But yeah, it gives nice it move. gives time for white. All right, how is going to get on the scoreboard here? I think so, yeah. With a win. Um, it, if she doesn't win this, this is going to be too devastating. Exactly, but she should. I mean, no more attack. The position is just completely winning. Yeah, you know, she even... advantage. What else to have in order yeah, to she win? She even could, I think, take there, you know, and give up this knight and play like King H2. Like, even that was, was possible, but okay. Yeah, um, better to keep this knight under attack. Yeah, yeah. you see it. Take it, I guess. Why not? Start pushing. Mm -hmm. Looks as a very good plan. She played <gasps> King G2. G2. Wow. Five. Kind of. Okay. A little bit unexpected, but okay. E5, D6, E6. It's very good. It's just winning. Yifan it dropped off massively after her having kids. Well, she, as far as I know, she doesn't have any kids, guys. <laughs> yes. What to nice say theory. about Katerina in that case? Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, knight f4. Knight f4 should be careful because if knight f4 and rook h1, some checkmating patterns here. Checkmate alert. Rook h1. Uy, uy, uy. Wow. Okay. Katerina did create a. Oh, my God. It's a oh, checkmate. Oh. She survives. She knight survives. King no. D2. Oh, 96 in the end. Oh, there was Rook 96. G1. Oh yeah, my gosh, was she mouse sleep. She mouse sleep mouse instead slip. of Rook takes F2. What yeah. was going to happen there? Yeah. It's did she have any sleep. reaction there to that? Yes, 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 she She yeah. did? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But what what was the evaluation of this position where she mouse sleep when she played probably, Rook I, I think probably she was already winning. Uh, was she? How? How could it let me just quickly see because it happened so fast king to d2 and then yes rook takes f2 and 96 exactly yeah yeah 96, 96 she's, she's returning and stopping uh, the pawn. so she yeah. was winning so she turned the tables around and she wow almost won the game where we was when i was saying that there is no way you know to find any chances yeah Possible. Amazing! Now that was that got exciting out of nowhere. I mean, I guess on the seconds. Well, um, King G two was a very bad move. I don't know. Somehow it was discoordinating pieces, and you know why not capture this knight on H three? Less pieces, less chances to create a counter attack. Okay, but anyway, good for Huyafan actually to win that, uh, because uh, otherwise, yeah, it would have been devastated, as you said. Yeah, no, that was um, a super exciting game. Yeah. Um, but it does make the match closer for us. And here we go back to the Sicilian. Mm -hmm. And we got, how, how does this line compare to everything that we've seen? Slightly different. Well, it's uh, similar to the first Sicilian that they played, right? Right, it's similar, similar, but it's not it's not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Because there's no, there's no, like, knight on b4. Um, yeah. So... Here, their knight of five doesn't have the same effect because you're not actually hitting anything. So here we are. Okay. Yeah, it's a different line that who we find chose. She didn't play knight c6, right? She played knight d7 and d5, which is a different story, but similar Sicilian ideas. So now black needs to develop in castle, right? That's ideally. Mm -hmm. What's well, going to happen? Although I see the <clears throat> eval bar really didn't like this move, and I wonder why it doesn't look that terrible. So, what fatal flaw does it have? Maybe bishop f4. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, there you go. 
at some point. And then Knight of five pass, bishops. Yeah, and then you'll land some tactics on the bishop. Mm -hmm. well, after e5, the bishop on d5 is no longer protected, right? And yeah, and see, after this, then we are going to take and go knight of five, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So this move did have a kind of a fatal flaw that, you know, black is now uh, in an unpleasant skewer. So, yeah. Again, now kink is in the center. Kink mm -hmm. is in the center. Time is very important. She definitely knows about queen this e5. idea. Queen e5. And then knight e3 couldn't be... Yeah, bishop Okay, there's bishop c6, so it's not over. So but... what, what do we have here? After bishop c6, where... Because I thought maybe knight queen d6. What else? Yeah, it just doesn't doesn't look that bad actually for black anymore after bishop c6. It doesn't. So I'm trying to understand what else white could have done. Uh, what else did they have? Queen g5, maybe. Okay, but it was too complicated. Knight b6 uh, is also interesting. Mm -hmm. After knight takes, okay, you get a strong knight in the center. Sure, black white has a bishop, but I think your knight is not worse. So I feel. Um, well, I feel like this opening position, uh, how he can be satisfied from. Yes. Yes. But again, I think it's okay for white as well. Many useful moves to make. Rook e1, even queen d4. Maybe pretty equal. But nothing tragical yes. yet. So now if I castle... Am I going to get in some trouble here? Uh, I, can, I can castle, I think. Yes. Well, not always good to castle, but uh, often, often good to castle. For example, like if you try taking and I take, the problem why you can't just win a pawn uh, is because your bishop is going to be pinned to b2. And in fact, well, that looks quite dangerous. Okay, maybe you can play c4, right, and keep it going. But I don't think that Katarina is going to be going for that. And indeed, she plays bishop d3. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes is left for this first segment of the match. I don't really think that we covered the format at the beginning. But as usual, yeah. three segments, uh, 90 minutes of 5 plus 1, then followed by 60 minutes by 3 plus 1, and then, and then final final segment last but not least 30 minutes uh, one plus one so what is white threatening here is there a threat it's not I really i don't think it's about threats anymore right because the attack has not started yet on the uh, king side we still have opposite uh, side uh, castles knight g4 queen g5 uh, well there are some attempts to uh, try to play for this attack i'm just not sure how possible it is i would yeah. I don't know i would just try to exchange uh light uh, pieces i mean i would try to exchange knight and bishops and get into an equal end game so i guess the plan well, well it's a little tricky to move this knight because he's protecting this bishop so actually how needs to deal with that you know what i just realized maybe this is the plan alexandra or like Super some luck. version of it you know yeah that's why huh. white just captured on d5 and she was going to play bishop e4. She will want to um, exchange this knight. Rook yeah, d8, so rook bishop d8, takes okay. e5, and it's a completely equal. Yeah, uh, and that satisfies her, right? Because, okay, she didn't really get an amazing opening, and she's up in the match. So no reason to take a lot of risk. I wouldn't take a lot of risk here as white, because I just I actually feel like if white tries to play, I like black's position more. Um, in that case, I like the potential of attacking this king. It's actually like your pawns are very, very far from my king. Well, my pawns are just a short walk from your king. So I think white should be conservative in their ambitions here. I calculated the line. Bishop oh, takes right. d5, rook takes d5, queen f2, rook takes d1, rook takes d1, queen takes h2, and there is a queen b6. Ah, back it's rank. not winning, yeah, but so black has to protect the eighth rank and then I can win the pawn back. But it's not happening. It's not happening because Irina played queen to e2. Somehow, I don't know, I would 
I would be scared uh, to to make this move because of knight b6. Uh, I don't know. I don't like if. Okay, I'm not really yeah. guessing their moves correctly. Knight of six is okay. Bishop. I mean, well, she's. It's very simple. She's just going a5 and b4 now, right? So I, I do think like, exactly. well, we're going to see some action here, actually. Exactly. Yeah. Knight of six is the same idea to keep the knight on the board, um, to keep more pieces on the board. More pieces means more chances to attack, to create an attack, right? It's too far away still. Mm, G3, yeah. G3, G6. G6? What's going on? <laughs> Not, I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah, it's a bit so of a flat. surprising move. I mean, just because it wasn't strictly necessary. I you know, maybe wouldn't. she's preparing for an endgame. Maybe she wants to exchange rooks, like rook d1, rook d8, yeah. and she's putting all her pawns onto the square of the same color of white's bishop, mm. you know, like book, book-like play. Maybe the idea was that a5, there was rook d8 or something, and she just didn't think that, you know, she can't really take with the rook, and she just thought that, Queen takes wasn't a big deal. So maybe how is not really trying to attack. Sad. So G6. <laughs> but let's see. G6 might be very might be a very good prophylactical move, right? G6 kind of stopping this bishop. H4 is not really possible to play since the pawn on G3 is gonna hang. F4 also doesn't feel right. I mean, how to use this G6 move. Other otherwise, yeah. She opened up. Uh, mm -hmm. um, there are there are no more bank back rank uh, combinations after G six. Yeah, I mean, I like the move positionally, actually. So at this point, I'm not complaining about it. I like the king on G seven. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, White would love to get the queens off the board, right? So yeah, yes. there you go. She's trying. Yeah, because otherwise B4, I mean, it can... I think B4 is going to happen anyway. And so Queen D6, maybe Queen A7. Yep. Is she going to go A4, B3? Or what is her plan? Mm. She just okay. got tricked. Oh, well, that's nice. Why not? Because either she gets the Queen trade or she gets the Queen trade. Yes. <laughs> well, King G7 is an option right here for yeah. Black. No, I definitely think how shouldn't allow that Queen trade to happen. Like, I would do anything I could to keep the Queens on the board for Black here. Like, King G7. But sure. look at the time. I just realized that Katerina has only 15 seconds left. Yeah. Where, no. where did the time go? Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I guess she's thinking about the end game. Yeah, Rook takes B4. She actually can win this rook end game. Well, too many weaknesses for white, right? E5, yeah, B2. Yeah, G7, beautiful. Yes. Ah, finally, we see her idea. Why she played G6. No trade. Nope. It ain't Rook happening. B7, the king is very weak. White's very king is weak. very weak. Yeah, mm -hmm. that kind of king comes under a, a big attack. Yep, rook C4, rook A4. Is it lost? Queen. Mm. Okay, that pin. Rook B3. How do you survive no, the this? Pawn sand game is still okay for white, right? Due to this uh, B2 pawn. Yeah, I'm, try I'm trying to win your rook, but <laughs> like, um, okay. So how is no, rook B5 is possible to play with the threat of uh, with the idea of rook D5 and that the pawn is lost. Yeah. yeah, but queen D4. I mean, I'm still hanging mm. on. Uh, actually, I don't know how to lay this end game after queen takes e5, queen takes e5, rook takes e5. I think white has good chances to survive. Oh, king c2, but rook d5. Ooh. Yeah, it doesn't look good. Right, because queen well, here, and yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of over. It. That's it. I don't know why she played king c2, Ooh. but anyway, yeah, somehow, somehow. Okay, well, she had to take on d5. Yeah. Right. Actually, you got to feel the danger from a little while away, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to temper your ambitions. The bishop is not always better than the knight um, when there's this kind of queens on the board. And yeah, black was just uh, able to get to white's king. While but anyway, white, you know. now it's a different story. Three and a half to two and a half, right? Just one point difference. It could have been completely different right if katerina would have won this crazy game when she was completely mm, yeah, lost yeah. Uh, but at the end she was completely winning four and a half to a half we would have seen the score now just a few games later it's three and a half to two and a half and well the match is starting all over again yep all right well that's nice for us we get to see another match 
Um, and so what we're getting here, different structure, right? Which I like visually by white, of course, because yeah, the plan is so obvious. Queen G3, knight H4, knight F5, using this F file. You see all those kind of structures in the Italian game with the colors reversed often when black takes on, I mean, yeah. white takes on E6. So it's quite a common structure nowadays. Yeah, it's very common. You know, I have to tell you, like, I would never want to play these positions for Black Alexandra, and I understand. Maybe you can like. I mean, it looks your... bad, but it's okay. In fact, yeah. it's it's fine. I mean, it's it's hard to believe, but when the knight comes to a five and there is no bishop on e three, right? There is no dark squared bishop anymore. It's so easy to play g six. You can go. You mean like yeah. like even king eight seven knight g eight and g six. Even or immediately. Something. Even for example, mm -hmm. imagine the knight here, knight f five. I would play g six, and after knight takes h six, king g seven. So there yeah. are ideas like this with the colors reversed when the black knight goes to f4. Mm -hmm. So it looks pretty scary, but uh, somehow the side which is being attacked, uh, which is black at the moment, can survive this attack. There are no not enough pieces to somehow create um, any like serious threat. Although no. now. What I'm What's curious about, now, Alexandra, like, yes. is it possible to take a knight like this? Just take it. Is it bad? Uh, it is possible. Because, is you possible. know, if you take with the pawn, then... But rook takes pawn. b5. No, I would yeah, rook takes... yeah, and then bishop yeah. b3, and again, this pressure on the f-file. Mm -hmm. So that's why she decides to tolerate the knight. Okay, well, interesting decision. But she played knight h7 instead of this g6 move, and after queen g3... Oh, she, she wound did... up taking it anyway. Okay. Well, she she was obliged to because uh, too many pawns were hanging, and now she kind of... <laughs> yeah. Had to take on f5. Yeah. But we're, now we're gonna we're see this. Trade pressure. off your opponent's dangerous pieces. Again, exactly. But maybe it's not that bad because d5 can happen at uh, any time. Mm, I don't know. Now it's getting trickier. Rook f1, bishop b3, very easy to play for white at least. Yeah, this knight is stuck here for a while. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was supposed to be moved there. Yeah, like now, now, now white's at least next two moves are very obvious, right? Right. How to deal with that? You actually very hard to stop bishop b3 because even on a5. But maybe f6. Yeah. Who cares? Maybe f6. Maybe I can play f6. Mm -hmm. It looks ugly. I know. But then bishop b3, king h8. Yeah, I'm already looking forward to the checkmate on uh, g6. I have That's my knight on e7. I have my knight on e7 still. <laughs> you know what I'll do? Yeah, I'll like put the bishop there, the knight there, then maybe some queen g6. In the well, I mean... you know, after like f6, knight f3, there is another plan with uh, queen h2, g4, h4, g5, right? There are some yeah. ideas, of course. Yeah. Uh, we can oh, wow, accept... she played it. Wow. Well... This move is on the board. Look at that. You guessed it. Um, well, great minds. Yeah. Alike, yeah. right? That don't... <laughs> okay. All right. So, we, so, okay. And that's not the move I would have expected, but okay. I mean, A4 so it seems a little strange to me. I don't okay. know why she wants to open the play on the queen side. Very strange because, but okay. I mean, yeah, I, I don't really get that move so much. Because, well, just yeah. in case, you know, you never know when it's uh, going to help you. But after mm. A4, Black always needs to consider A takes B5 and wow. thus protecting the Rook on A8. A mm. And actually, yeah, switching the side. Rook A3, yeah, she's Rook A1. Yeah. yeah, why not? She's why not? completely... So she, you think she wants to go like Rook A2 or Rook A1? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's yeah, kind of Rudy Lopez uh, play on both sides because, well, yeah. in this particular case, white doesn't have more space, but um, there are positions like this with the pawn on d5, right? And those Karpov style games, well, mm -hmm. when he started, I mean, when he played on both sides, doubling the rook on the a files and transferring all his rooks to the king side and like this masterpieces, strategical masterpieces. So, yeah. Yeah. I love it. So one chess says that Yifan, highest rated woman player, some of her moves will be mysterious to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a very good, that's a very good comment there. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, the, the thing is, guys, actually, when you commentate, I mean, so you will periodically see mysterious moves on pretty much all games that you commentate, right? Because you're not always on the same track as the players. Um, you will be surprised. 
I think that's kind of normal. Um, but okay, yeah, definitely interesting uh, switch of plans by how, like totally from the king side to the queen side. Uh, we'll okay. see how effective that is. Well, black um, can't play d5 at any moment. I'm not sure if they want to play d5 because it's always like risky uh -huh. decisions since uh, the yeah, pawn on d6 maybe... kind of, yeah, protects the pawn on e5, on c5. Yeah, and exactly after d5, this uh, b1, h7 diagonal is going to open. So maybe just keeping uh -huh. the pressure. What maybe. do you think about b4? Is that bad because you're giving up c4 square? Like before, it's mm. kind of interesting. Where's this rook? It this is, rook but two? again, yeah, yeah. Rook a2, yeah. So she's actually preempting that. She's going there right away and also protecting this pawn. Okay, so let's see. The problem for black is, of course, they always have to be careful about these light squares around yeah, there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, this knight is therefore like he's a good defender, but he's rather passive. So he very importantly protects this square because you don't want to let the queen there. On the other hand, okay, knight on the back of the board, not great. Um, now white needs to think, I think about this knight. Well, um, she mm -hmm. thinks that the knight is standing okay there, mm -hmm. um, keeping uh, the c4 square under control, protecting the bishop on b3. Yeah. Is her next move for bishop f7? I mean, maybe, I right? Because now she moves the knight, she also has to deal with c4. So I think after bishop b3, yeah, you're not really going to be moving the knight. All right. Ah, she did play c4. Katerina did play c4. So now it's... Interesting. So what's the idea? Yeah. Oh, c queen c5 is the idea. Just a positional sacrifice, apparently. Just to ruin white structure, to create mm -hmm. those... Uh, weaknesses on e3 e4 but again an extra pawn is an extra pawn right uh is yeah. this initiative and compensation gonna be enough for the sacrificed pawn always a hard question to answer oh. b4 look at that i like it <laughs> i mean definitely I really, very creative i like it a lot i mean look at this bishop it's terrible the rook is terrible the queen is beautiful really nice play by katarina i mean i love i love uh positional uh, <laughs> look all sacrifices. her pieces and pawns are on the black squares instead yeah. of the rook. rook a7 needs to be played katerina makes this move please please out of this <laughs> oh she spoiled it no she but it's okay because she's on the gonna try square. to put a knight here and that's another good plan right but i'm waiting i'm waiting for the moment with all black pieces on black squares that would be great um, <laughs> you, know, you know, guys, that was really cool stuff that we just saw. Really nice idea of sacking the pawn to like put everything on the dark squares, close up the rooks, get that beautiful square for the queen. So I think Katarina can be very, very pleased with herself for finding that. Mm -hmm. But now the, oh, look more, at that. More sacrifices. Yes, sacrifice. Take that pawn, get the knight to the outpost. Yeah, beautiful. Nice. And rook b8. And rook b8. I'm still waiting for this moment with all black pieces on, on black. Side. I think she'll do it. There you Good. go. You got Good. your wish. Knight c5. Knight c5. Come on. Come on. No, queen f4 check first. Yes, just to be sure, you know. But g3, it's kind of forces queen takes c4. Knight, okay. Yeah, here's a moment. Make clips. <laughs> here's a moment. Hooray. All My right. wish came true. Sorry, guys. It's so nice to see your wishes coming true. Sorry. I'm back. Yeah, I'm back to the match. Oh, no, this yeah. is beautiful. Look at this. And this knight exactly. is coming to the outpost. I really am going to have to find this game afterwards and show it to my students um, because it really is very instructive. Yeah. It, oh. it is, indeed. Well, she. Uh, it's interesting to see that she's not taking on e4, right? Not to spoil right. anything, not to open up this bishop even potentially. Knight, yeah, is coming to d4. Yeah, an amazing play. That's it. Yeah. You know, knights, they really enjoy outposts. And now both knights are going to have the outposts and total control over dark squares. The b-file and the rooks have no coordination. Yeah, I think actually this is my favorite thing that I've seen in this match so far, this concept, mm -hmm. right? Did, this, yeah. Yeah, it's very beautiful because it's almost like it has the depth of something that you've seen a classical game, but uh, in Blitz, it's harder to carry out the, these positional concepts. Yeah, very, so she has an, a pawn sack and an exchange sack. Yeah, exactly. And she's just playing to like blockade, to occupy this uh, 
black squares. It's uh, purely positional sacrifices. Yeah. Oof. Now, well, now there are two knights. There is no more bishop on b3, but it doesn't make white's play any easier. Yeah, all of a sudden, you know, I just kind of had a, you know, well, I just didn't like this idea of, you know, switching over to the queen side, totally giving up on the king side play. Mm -hmm. But of course, I mean, that wasn't the problem. Something, you know, happened later. The plan itself was may maybe doable, but, um, but here we go. Kind yeah, of very fact. nice win. Very nice victory. Yeah. Somehow when you win in such a style, well, at least it gives me such a uh, lot of uh, pleasure. So it kind of motivates me, right? To inspires me in a way to like create more masterpieces like this. Yeah. I mean, tactical masterpieces are also very nice and fun, yeah. but strategical masterpieces are so much deeper than. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. All right. Well, we're back in the Sicilian, guys, where generally Katarina has had the edge, although the last Sicilian game, how actually won. Mm -hmm. um, are they going to repeat the same line? No. Uh, it's a six. Hmm, it's back to this. This is yeah, their strange. first game. This is literally, I believe it's their first game, and now she takes on D4. So now that's not, that's a new position for them. Mm -hmm. And for us. Yep. <laughs> okay. So what can we say about this? I guess we will see G4. I mean, what else can we possibly see? Maybe King B1. Yes, we will. Short side castle and um, opposite side uh, castles. Well, like a classical Sicilian game, right? Yes. Those crazy, crazy positions. Is Katerina alive? I mean, because she seems that her cam seems to. Oh, uh, she's not like it's not. Oh, I hope yeah. that uh, no. no, she is. I think she, she's she's is. good, good. There. Because yeah. it's so sad to have this internet connection problems. It distracts you so much. And, yeah, uh, I would only I would only say it would be nice if we could see her better. You know, because she's mm -hmm. there in a dark, dark room. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, you know, black is her favorite color, as we uh, saw in the previous game, in the dark, dark room, playing on the dark, dark, dark squares square. with dark, dark pieces. So, <laughs> you know how the story goes, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, G4, Rook, C8. Well, Rook, C doesn't really make any particular threat. So, I guess, what would I play here as white? Yeah, I mean, King, B1 is fine. You can definitely invest a tempo into that. Mm -hmm. uh oh wait yeah but you... i think she she has some problems with her zoom and with her call and cam and according to the rules if she has this kind of uh, problem she needs to reconnect she needs to reconnect to zoom before making uh, moves uh, before continuing her game yep so all right it's very so... sad always it distracts you tremendously mm -hmm. All what right. to say it was supposed i think it is supposed to be the last game of the segment because we see that just 10 minutes oh, 10 uh, minutes yeah, yeah 10 minutes could be the last that. game so mm -hmm. four and a half two and a half two points okay i mean this game is going to be of course very important mm -hmm. if how could put it within one um but i would say the opening is starting out in a more promising way for white it's very hard for black to get this move in every time she plays d5 well, first of all, I can take because you have some issues with a G7 pawn. Um, secondly, in this position, actually, okay, so what if I just played G5? Like yeah, G5 it. should be considered because the pawn on G7 is under attack. So Yeah, H5 what, what happens F4? on G5, knight H5, and F4? Because doesn't Probably that... knight takes F4, I don't know. Ah, knight F4 and you have E5, yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe, maybe. That's interesting. We can put that on the board. We have plenty of time to analyze now. Well, for the moment, there is no result since Katerina still has three minutes to get her connection back back to solve all these uh, technical issues. And, uh, well, and then we'll see. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, look at this nice tactic, guys. Mm -hmm. Knight takes F4 because, well, you have a problem with your knight, but instead of, you know... Doing Desperado. Passive, yeah. Desperado. Yeah. Um... So queen takes f4 mm -hmm. and e5. E5. You get them in a fork. 
Yeah, and the position is completely unclear, right? But again, no. maybe I can prepare for this f4. Okay, your knight is on h5, let it be on h5. Maybe I can play bishop e3 and get ready for... I mean, it looks slow, but f4 yeah. is a threat. Do I need to play this move? It's a little bit ugly, yeah? Actually, yeah. I, can, I can do it. Yeah, but then, like, it's forever, forever there, this d5, no. d5. Bon, yeah, bishop f1, bishop h3, I like this maneuver. Yeah, mm -hmm. like bishop f1. And, yeah, it's actually annoying because it comes with a tempo. Exactly. And again, what to do with this knight? Well, let's say I castle. Bishop h3. Indeed. And bishop g4. And now... Knight f4, right? Yeah, now we're going to be sacking that pawn. Okay. Well, a pawn is a pawn. Then I take. Are you going to play h4 or just... Yeah, uh... I think so. I think h4. And then g6. Right. Uh-huh. Well... And knight d5. I mean, I like it. Unless like I'm getting checkmated yeah. for white, right. yeah. Well, hold on, hold on. I don't a5. Like... Yeah, I think a5 should be played. A5, interesting. And knight b5, you just uh, have a lot of play at queen d6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Get, get that game, get that play going. I mean, maybe. Maybe the computer doesn't care about all those. He, he just he, It would just take on b5, you know, but I don't know. I'm scared to take on b5, so it's kind of different. <laughs> And... Yeah, so guys, there are three formats here in the Women's Speed Chess Championship. They're playing 90 minutes of 5 plus 1, 60 minutes of 3 plus 1, and 30 minutes of 1 plus 1. So it gets gradually shorter. We're finishing up that first time control. Um, okay, I think, are the players back? Let's see, do we have any new moves? Oh, we do have actually some new ah, moves. They are good. back. Good, so Katerina is back. Okay, okay well, see, she... Mm -hmm. H4, E5 by And how... actually, her clock has been adjusted, so she did not really lose this time. Nice. Good. Okay, so we're back. Yeah, on track. That's good. Okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. You couldn't take the bishop because of the checkmate on C2, so white moves away the king, and actually, black is doing quite okay. Yeah, what happened, actually? What happened? Why Why? Why so easy? E5, E5 and then... yeah, somehow this, somehow this worked out, this E5 and just D5. Very no, because white played five. H4. Why didn't she play yeah. G5? That's right. She did not follow our <laughs> advice, uh, our analysis <laughs> yeah, of going right. G5. She went here and then somehow Hao found a very strong reaction. Mm -hmm. Maybe she had time to plan this um, because right now she... Opens up the game for her pieces. She got rid of the backwards pawn, or she opens up this bishop as well. And yeah, I mean, I don't know if this is a threat even, right? Yeah, because there's still queen c2, queen e2. Mm -hmm. But basically, even if she needs to move the bishop somewhere, yeah, black's position is totally, totally it's fine. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. When they manage to play e5 and d5. Um. Okay, but at least there is no more knight on the board for black. So no knight versus bishop and games. So this could be their last game of this portion, or they can play another one. It's actually kind of interesting. What do you it think, Alexandra? You think it, probably this will be the last one? It seems so well, unless... I mean, I'm not sure Katerina is thinking. Um, unless she has... Again... Or problems. Mm, you know we'll what, what I'm thinking about here? Bishop, can you go here where they, they're not going to trade with you, unfortunately? And if I play f6, well, then of, I think oops, I'm sorry, queen takes d5 check. Yeah, yeah sorry. that's the idea. She actually, so she went for this mm -hmm. because you know what I'm thinking? I'm, I'm in bailout mode. When I see this mm -hmm. position as white, it's like it's a game that she had a few games ago. Mm -hmm. Obviously, black is all the initiative, the open files against the king. So we're trying to trade pieces. Of course, if you take me, I'm happy to get an open h file for my rook. Um, and that's the whole point. You don't have F6, so we get to trade something. Well, I thought it was attractive. I see the computer eval is still mm -hmm. is still in black's favor. Um, Bishop A2 is a threat right now. Bishop takes A7, Bishop ah. A2. That's a problem. So black. That's... White needs to to do something <laughs> against that's it. That's nasty because I can't even move my queen with this with this pawn hanging. Wow. Exactly. Bishop D3, Bishop takes F3. So how to protect uh, from this Bishop A2 annoying ah. threat? 
So it's funny because the move is logical, but the tactically there's a big flaw. Mm -hmm. Yep. How do we deal with that? Just famous discovered attack guys. One of the most famous tactics in chess opening up. Yeah, I was trying to calculate this lines with sacrificing the queen, but it's not enough. Queen to c1. Well, it looks sad, but maybe it was the only option. Yeah, how is okay? She's going on the attack with b4, so maintaining the initiative. Definitely really hard to play as white. Like, I mean, yeah, I think Alexandra and the Sicilian is white. If your queen is ever on c1, you're just not doing that well. Do you think we can make that rule? <laughs> yes, yes, that will be our rule. Yes. Yeah, because, okay, so, oh, okay, well, one second, though, you can't really take without losing the exchange, so what's the plan? What's the plan? That actually seems like maybe it was a little premature. F6. Okay, fine. Uh, Bishop D2, you know, play yeah, it I think safe. So. <laughs> play it I safe. think you just got to do it. Mm -hmm. What else can she do? I mean, yeah, you don't want to make it so easy for them to get this pawn. Okay, the dream is like this, and then you kind of come out and get your piece. But you still, out. yeah, it doesn't feel right for white. It seems that C3? they're running. No, 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 C3. C3, C3, yeah. C3. Okay, G5. Well, G5, I can play F5, right? But yeah, I don't want to let white open up. Yeah, so, but I mean, nice tempo that Katarina gets here. She doesn't have much time. That is mm -hmm. going to be a factor. So, what just... about rook takes this ring? Rook takes. Pawn takes, and then which move? I don't know. Do you I don't know. <laughs> I don't interesting. Know. I'm definitely I willing just, to yeah, look at it. I was just, yeah, wondering. You know, in the Sicilian, it's another one of my favorite things the rook takes c3 mm -hmm. sacrifice. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, but now is uh, definitely. Uh, was a threat rook takes this three okay not anymore not anymore to bishop and to e5 okay so whites up a pawn black actually can take it back i don't know if that's really that doesn't look it doesn't look like a terrible queen move. e7 also yeah, looks... there's even bishop c4 if she's interested if she wants to take a wow. look at bishop c4 she can yeah something did not go quite as expected for black Mm. Staying all white pieces. Wait. Yeah. But why does the engine love black so much? Is I it don't know. the activity? I think it's the activity. I think it's just King H8 and Queen E4 and uh, the wow. total like that. That's going to be a, a killer, right? It's kind of sad. Queen F4 and then you capture and play Rook D4. Oh, oh yeah. That looks I mean, like it's, it's almost. Gonna... almost. And then you, you don't even have any of these squares for your Rook. <laughs> That's a problem. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. Somehow it felt. That white, oops, rookie one, yeah, sorry, sorry, it was yeah. under control. Well, she needs to resign, right, and they still have enough time for another game. Yes, yes, and hopefully this time Katerina won't have any uh, technical yeah, issues. So or... I think, oh, game aborted, why? Maybe, really... maybe she wants to, I don't know, reconnect or to somehow... Or uh, maybe the, maybe the clock timer got a little bit messed up through that, um, I don't know, through that delay in that game. But you know mm -hmm. what's interesting? Oh, the Yif oh look, what, here's the news. Yifan agreed to add two minutes to Katarina's clock. Mm -hmm. We've also extended by two minutes the main chronograph if you can match with stream clock. Okay, so I don't know. Okay, but definitely yeah. one more game, right, to, to be played in this yeah. uh, time segment. It doesn't matter how much time is left. We're going to see one last game of this uh, five plus one segment. And the current score is four and a half to three and a half in Katerina Lagno's yeah. favor for the moment. She started very strongly. Hmm. But uh, in the last games, I mean, who you find fought it back? There were crazy, crazy games, of course, um, many of them. But somehow, yeah, somehow the match. Well, I think that's, first of all, good sportsmanship by how you fawn to mm -hmm. agree to add a couple of minutes to Katarina's clock because mm -hmm. uh, she didn't have to do that. And, you know, the internet connection problems are just a part of the, you know, the rules here. So I think that was nice. Um, on the other hand, I do feel like that game, Alexandra, was really impacted by Katarina's connection problems. Like, I don't feel like she was quite the same. Like, she tried. She definitely tried. Mm -hmm. but um, But I think... It probably affected her her quality of play. Yeah, definitely. No questions about it because again, I had, well, not the same situation, of course, uh, with in my match against Kuyafan, but I did have uh, 
similar like technical problems, uh, logging out and uh, well, with my internet not behaving uh, very well. And it just distracts you so much. And yeah. the minute you lose this focus, it's just so hard. Okay, and we see another real opus with 93.95. Uh, quite a modern approach, let's say. So uh, we see the knight coming out to C3 very often uh, in uh, the latest games in Italian, in Rui Lopez. This knight C3, knight D5 idea is quite fashionable with Magnus Carlsen playing it uh, himself. So everyone follows the steps of the world champion. Okay, uh, nah, well, so what saying, to say? You say Magnus Carlsen has been playing... Well, I mean, it's some, maybe not after yeah. Bishop C5, but yeah, definitely Knight C3 and yeah. all this kind of uh, ideas. What to say here? And the most important thing for Black is not to castle uh, early. Because uh -huh. if, especially if you play the H6 and then you castle, somehow White's attack can, yeah, Rook G1, G4, uh, as straightforward as that, can wow. become can be very unpleasant. There were several games where white completely destroyed black. So white is kind of hoping for black to castle, but black doesn't have to castle. But okay. And again, it's going um, in circles around uh, about this knight on d5. Nothing particularly dangerous for black, but now, okay, we see d4 move. Mm, bishop a7 or uh -huh, this one and bishop before check probably that's the idea yeah yeah very very concrete solution by katarina makes sense mm -hmm. um and okay here bishop b4 then your knight can move to e7 after the trade of bishops yeah it looks pretty decent for black what can white do? I mean, the problem they is... They can take on yeah. d5 uh -huh. as a bishop, but then bishop before any anyway, right? Yeah, and then you still take. It's very mm -hmm. similar. Mm -hmm. And so can I take instead your pawn on... Your bishop on c5. Well, I'm sure there's some reason why. Not you can, good. but then black is going to take on e4, probably. Bishop takes e4. Why not? That's a central pawn hanging. Yeah. I mean, it's always scary to but take which this one do you think is better? I mean, do you think we should take this pawn and then the pawn on c5? Or because there's two pawns that you can take. I mean, I kind of like getting rid of this bishop because here, I mean, no, I agree, but... But the bishop maybe... on b3 is still alive. Yeah, so bishop's, bishop's advantage, alive. yes. And maybe, you know, okay, black is fine. They're going to play d5. They're totally fine. So she can do either, but it's going to be... It's a choice. Let's see what how is going to go for. So she goes for this and this. Okay. So the opening is working out pretty well for Logno, who, by the way, is just threatening at some point to just win that pawn. Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? That's a tasty pawn. Queen C2, yeah. white can try to protect it, but then Queen D7, I believe, and then, yeah, Knight takes D5 will eventually happen. Okay, interesting move by Howe. She's mm -hmm. got to be creative. And I have to say, I like that queen coming to F3. And, and I knight think, coming to F5. Yeah, it's yeah a and I think, um, I think we're going to see this move in this game. I'm just going to make a ah, guess. G4. Okay. Yeah, at some point, I think we will see this move. Let's see, guys. If, uh, <laughs> how, 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 uh, how's, my, how's my career as a fortune teller? Right. Well, you know, queen D7, maybe. Yeah. Oof. Castling? All right, okay, G4, but, can yes. we go here? No, not queen yet. Queen F3 first. Queen yeah, F3 first. Uh -huh. And if queen D7, H3, right? So Maybe, yeah, H3. Yeah, yeah. Not rook G1. Can you go G5 queen. there? Oh, you can't go G5 because I will take your knight. Yeah, I was going to say that G5 might be an idea, but then I realized that mm. knight on F6 is hanging. Knight G6. Okay, so hold on. Let, let's ask a question to our chat, guys. Okay, let's do Question that. to the chat. What is the biggest problem of Black's position? So that requires some sort of, you know, general picture thinking. It's not like, you know, there's a one move checkmate threat by white. So just think about what's the biggest problem of black's position. Mm -hmm. All right. That's... But, but now it's gone. Or, <laughs> almost, almost gone. Okay. Some tactics. Yeah. Going on. Mm -hmm. Lena is, is, uh, is hitting that night. Um, what do we do? Oh, tough question. Yes. G4. Here oh, we go. You're yes. a great, yeah, you're a great uh, uh, fortune, teller. fortune teller. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. 
Okay, well, undeveloped pieces. Undeveloped, yeah. where, are, where are they? Where are those? Where are those undeveloped pieces? Uh, so my my answer to that question, guys, would have been that the biggest problem is this bishop. Yes. Because exactly. out of play... Overdeveloped piece, pieces. Overdeveloped. Yes. It's like, <laughs> it's really kind of a cutout from the play, right? So you want to pay attention to that. Um, and of course, white has an initiative against the king. We get that. But part of the reason why that's happening is because you got this totally useless bishop on b4. Um, and yeah. if, you know, I don't know, if you put the bishop back on d7, turns him into a light squared bishop, it would certainly be more helpful. So, okay, we pay attention to things like that when we evaluate a position. Uh, Black but they, they say that chess is 99% of tactics, yeah? That's why we also need to keep an eye on the yeah. such possibilities as knight takes d5. Yeah, so... The idea is if you try to take the knight, in the end, you lose that knight and actually kind of lose your whole attack. So I wonder, what was the best move here for white? I mean, there were lots of ideas. You could try knight of five. Yeah, g4. I like the, this move. You like g4, yeah? Well, and I would personally consider taking on d5 and playing knight e5, but g4 also looks pretty, mm -hmm. pretty logical. Yeah, and that's exactly why a black, white didn't play bishop d2. They didn't want to exchange oh. this bishop that is completely out of play on before. That's why Hoyfine moves her king instead to f1. Wait, wait, wait. Her... Yeah, yep. so if, if knight e7, can we make some tactics work here? Of course. We always can. We are magicians. Yeah, well, what, exactly. What are we going to sacrifice? What kind of tactics? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> too, too, too many things to sacrifice. I don't know. It's not so easy, right? It's no, not... it's not. Like, let me just put, like, let me put it this way. Like, I see the eval bar giving a big evaluation for white, but I mean, unless I can make the sack on H6 work, I'm not sure why it's so, why oh, it's so, so big. big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good question. But anyway, let's take a look at what's going on in the game. So, yeah. for C6 solidifying this knight i mean nice solid move mm -hmm. and what did white g5. do g5 okay yeah i like white okay. position yeah this i is don't care fun, about the evaluation i just like it yeah this bishop is one day maybe gonna even come to this diagonal mm -hmm. wouldn't be such a big surprise and yeah i mean first of all it's just a lot of fun to play with the rook on h1 opening up um I'm not sure what was going to happen after knight takes h4. Something definitely was going to happen. But Katerina uh, decided to play knight d to f4. Mm, scary. Oof. Scary because of that. I mean... Because of many things. Okay. Because so of h5. h5 yes. Yeah, h5. h5, knight h8, h6, g6, h7. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I get it. It's this move. It's, it's going to be a checkmate on e7, Alexandra. Right, some, right. Okay. Some, some kind of Anastasia checkmate, right? Bishop you know, just, takes four. Yeah, you know, I'm just as an example, as an example. Yeah, but like, queen takes a five. Yeah, yes. well, I know there's queen f5. Yeah. Like, I just want to show this. <laughs> yes, yes. That's the kind of ideas that are actually on the board, guys. Um, so you can be sure. Ah, that that's why she captured on a four first. Ah, that's clever. smart. Oh, ah, that's, that makes a huge difference. And pawn takes h5, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. That is coming, guys. Do you see that? You just it got is coming. Fight. Yes, Katerina just realized that it's coming. And, well, it's too late to, oh. to, too late to do anything about it. The bishop is so right. maybe d5. Well, well then the, the knight is hanging. Yeah, yes, the so knight is right. hanging. Checkmate is coming, guys. This is the key line. Queen sack, deflection tactic. And it's such a beautiful mate that you don't see every day. Um, but we're going to see an even score in this match guys. And, um, yeah. And this is just, a, by the way, stylish win by how you find, right? Yeah. Very <laughs> nice win. Mm -hmm. It was an interesting theoretical battle in this knight c3, knight d5 line. It seems that, uh, black, uh, got a decent position, but somehow you see, that's what I was saying. Um, White is hoping for black to castle and then just to start this attack. A G4, G5. Yeah. Queen F3, F3 yeah. G4. It was just, I mean, who knows like how black could have neutralized it, but it wasn't it wasn't that easy. That was that was for sure. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Uh, but we have the even score, right? Four and a half to four and a half after the first segment of this exciting final match of the Women's Speed Chess Championship 2022 on chess.com. And I'm looking forward very much to the second and third parts of it. And I hope you're going to stay with us and enjoy the games.
Yeah, the players are playing great chess, guys. Really exciting, strategic chess, tactical chess, very high level. And uh, we'll see you on the other side of a short break for the three-minute portion. dominated Renaissance culture. In fact, it was a Catholic priest, Rui Lopez de Segura, who in 1561 published one of the earliest and most influential books on the game, which documented the priest's opening theories, including his namesake, the Rui Lopez, 
which is still a common opening nearly 500 years later. The 18th century ushered in an era of revolutions, most notably on the American continent, in France, and even in global industry. Napoleon Bonaparte was known to play chess with his generals. Benjamin Franklin, a founding father of the United States, was an avid chess player who penned the essay, The Morals of Chess, in 1786, where he wrote, Life is a kind of chess, in which we have often points to gain and competitors or adversaries to contend with. Hey guys, we're back for our coverage of the 2022 Women's Beach Chess Championship Finals. My name is Irina Crush. I'm joined by Alexandra Kostenyuk. And our players today are bringing us great chess, How You Fawn, Katarina Lagno. Very close match, four and a half, four and a half. Let's take a look at the Smarter Chess Stats by ChessGold.com. We have a win probability of 64% for How You Fawn. So she is favored to win this match according to Chess Stats um but by a by a score of about three points well so far um it's not exactly what we've seen as katarina has had the lead for most of the day right alexandra yes yes definitely but how you find survived the first part which seems to be uh great news for her because she was struggling in this first segment five plus one and i believe that in long terms as for example um who finds match against valentina gunina showed who we find um just somehow increases her uh, strengths i mean her level is not dropping um compared to other girls her level of i mean of um focus of concentration because it's so hard to be performing equally well in all three segments throughout almost three hours of play it's huge i mean to be just watching you know screen for three hours um it's very hard uh what to say about uh keeping uh concentration level very high and um posing uh, asking questions and solving all those uh, problems it's very very it's not obvious and uh, what i see from hoyefania i mean her level is very very equal in all three segments while most of the players i think of this championships will struggle in this yeah long matches yeah, stamina is a big part of these matches. And we did see that in the Gunina match that mm -hmm. she kind of kept on improving. Well, she definitely improved in the three minute portion compared to the five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, it's also interesting that in this portion, she decides to switch up the opening. Yes, which, yes. Yeah, Why to switch, I must say. <laughs> which we've also seen her do um, against uh, Gunina when she went to the Benoni. Mm -hmm. um, and here, I cannot say, you know, Alexandra, that the Sicilian was not working for her. I think it gave no. her some good wins. Like, mm -hmm. it was definitely an opening that she could have stayed with. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, she decides to switch it completely to the Petrov. Now, uh, Katarina prepared a lot of Petrov, I'm sure, for her match with Humpy. Mm -hmm. Because that featured a lot in their match. Um, I don't really know how you found too much as of a Petrov player. Yeah, I'm surprised to see it myself. Yeah, exactly. I don't yeah. remember her playing uh, Petrov. I mean, Chinese girls, and, and uh, they they are playing Petrov pretty often. For example, Juven June, it's like one of her, um, was one of her main weapon um, against E4, but definitely not Hoi Fan, yeah. Yeah, and right, well, right now, okay, so she's got a very stable position. Mm -hmm. I guess the one move that she's not going to play is queen takes queen because that would improve white's pawn structure. So black is just completely fine. Now, you see, this is not the Sicilian guys, right? <laughs> you can tell. Yeah. This is not the exciting stuff that we've been we've been uh, 
fed, you know, for the first portion of this match. Now we're on a on a low calorie, you know, no sugar diet, um, you know, in the, here in the Petrov where there's not so much uh, fun action. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Pretty equal, pretty boring stuff, uh, especially after those sharp Sicilian battles that we witnessed in the first segment. But we've seen quite a few of them. So, yeah, let's just... Uh... Let's just watch something mm. simpler and quieter. I don't know. Which move is she going to play here? She can do a lot. It's hard to get super enthusiastic, but I mean, it's okay. She wants to play queen b5, offer another queen trade, take with a c pawn if she's given a chance. Um, of course, you know, black will say no. Then maybe she'll try to push that pawn up to c6. Well, that's the dream. I mean, white doesn't have a lot to work with here, but... Um, she needs to, you know, watch out maybe for that queen coming in one day. I mean, I like rookie eight. What do you think? Uh, yeah, but it doesn't solve uh, like black's problems, right? So there is some pressure on the B file from one white. day. One day. One day. One day in this game, should I go out <laughs> and say the sacrifice is going to happen? I mean, I know I'm going to lose my money if I if I make that bet, but you know, it really can happen. That's mm -hmm. it's not crazy at all, right? Because we predicted this move. We predicted oh, you see, move you see, and... yeah. Where, yeah, but that's why White is trying to exchange uh, the queens. Actually, after queen takes b7, rook takes b7, the sun game is not so equal. Mm. Actually, as I thought it uh, would be, because those pawns, a7 and c7, they are weak. Even though White has like completely similar um, structure, but those pawns on a2 and c4, they are not the pawns on a7 and c7. Yeah. These two are producing some very high quality games, says Sibidal. Okay. So I agree with you, Sibidal. And I also, I like the variety in their games. Like I feel, first of all, that there's not that much luck involved, right, Alexandra? There haven't been too many games where you expect one side to win. And then they don't win. So things have been more or less logical. I mean, of course, one, it's just one like this. Yeah. yeah one, game. Mm -hmm. one game, which is not a lot, like given how many they've played. Right. So mostly we're getting like the results that the positions are uh, leaning towards. Right. So that means that um, there's a sort of consistency there and no huge turnarounds. Like when someone has an advantage, they tend to win the game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think that kind of, points to to a higher quality match than when you have completely random crazy things happening in the last couple of seconds and then someone who was totally winning just winds up losing yeah what we like bleeds for <laughs> uh, but uh well right now it's a three plus one uh segment that means that already now players are entering this uh crazy tape not um stage of the game yep uh, H4, yeah, H5, H4, H3. I predict this move will yes. happen somewhere <laughs> in this game. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. White is doing great on the queen side. Uh, Katerina managed to push her pawn to C6, but black doesn't watch mind. this move happen. Mm -hmm. Guys, let's let's just watch it. Come on, how? There you go. <laughs> yeah. Oops. 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 Whoa, whoa. What was it? Oh my gosh. She, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. she just hung the rook. Oops. Maybe it was supposed to be rook c1. Or no, just she just completely forgot about queen takes c2. That happens. I mean, those blind spots. Oh, she would no, no, it was a blind spot. Like she yeah, didn't yeah, know, it she, can it happen. Was, she her reaction didn't come when she played rook c2. It happened after the rook was taken. Then she was like, oh, like what? Like, how did I just lose my rook? Totally missed that. So uh we'll see whether it's like a blind spot or it's a sign of uh, tiredness, right? Because yeah. I mean, it's one half a match is already behind time-wise, right? 90 minutes is already behind and um, 90 minutes are ahead. So we'll see. We'll see. Okay, back to this. Oh, what? It's, it's the Italian. Now it's the Italian games. They are very alike, those Italian and Rui Lopez with the bishop on C5. So sometimes I... I'm not sure which one we're witnessing, but yeah, it's um, mm. the Italian and a very like H6 G5, very sharp kind of, not really an Italian, 
well, I don't know, hard to say, too nice defense, whatever. Pick, yeah. Pick the name, but um, a big theory here, why it has to be prepared, because it's considered to be pretty good for black, this kind of attack. Mm. And I'm, again, yeah. I'm tempted to just go knight f1 and go mm -hmm. knight e3. Uh, mm -hmm. She's thinking for a while, which... You know, it was She's funny. Trying to recall, probably her. Yeah, in the last in the last game, Before. it looked exactly. like they were doing nothing, and then suddenly they were down to like 20, 20 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very fast paced, guys. In these three minutes, it's uh, it's a total s switch from the five minute. Mm -hmm. So white sacrificed the pawn. It's quite a common sacrifice in this lines, where it's just in order to open up the e file, where it just gives up the central pawn, and then they sometimes try to break through by playing e5. Well, right now I'm not feeling as it's enough because there are some lines that I play with white uh, with the bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, g5, bishop g3, where d4 is a very common idea but the bishop is already on g3 so it's kind of after e takes d4 i can play e5 and the pawn on e5 is protected while here after e5 black will just simply capture on e5 yeah i take c5 and i don't really see how white can continue opening up uh, this e file do you see the concentration on how's face just look at her i, I can even see her lips moving like she was talking about the lines uh, uh kind of like to herself Mm -hmm. Right, you can see just the picture of concentration. Mm -hmm. um, but now she made her move, so now she actually looks a little more, more uh, relaxed. Right. Well, she did open up the e file, but the knight is here on e five, covering uh, the king. So for the moment, everything is under control. What? Uh, yeah. What white is gonna do? Knight e four, probably. Mm. Yes, knight e four. Okay, so things are getting exciting. Okay, mm -hmm. time to talk about the position, Alexandra. I know I've been <laughs> thinking about other things, but now, okay, you're attacking the bishop. That's a big one. I mean, the king is still stuck in the center. So now a knight takes, I suppose we're just going, I mean, we have a nice choice, right? I suppose queen d4 is my choice. Yeah, yeah, and then bishop f4. Yeah, lots of play for white. I mean, obviously I would prefer to be white here. Like, no For doubt. example, look, knight takes e4, queen takes d4. Uh -huh. Knight f6, uh, yeah. bishop f4, knight d7, and then you can capture it twice on e5, and the rook mm -hmm. on h8 is hanging. Yeah. Okay, and then king d7, well, rook d1, yes, but bishop e6, is it checkmate. possible? Checkmate, yeah. No, it's not a checkmate, but... Almost, it's good enough. Very close. Let's put the oh, checkmate yeah. on the board. Yes, yes. Oh. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Yes, don't... Well, rook d1, of course, is simpler and stronger probably but so anyway. bishop a7 yeah i think it's correct that katarina saves that bishop she's gonna need it but uh, does it change a lot yes after bishop of four that was my question okay she's trying to cast a lock she she is dreaming of uh, getting to the queen side yes mm. she wants to castle of course she wants to castle she wants to move her king away from this e file mm. let's see what's going to happen after yeah zero 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 after. Mm. is there some sort of bishop a6 idea wow it's why not <laughs> an idea right maybe it doesn't quite work but it's definitely like the idea guys to get the worse to consider a8. at least c6 yeah c6 like, c6 yeah think. well there's a lot of yeah, well, C6, okay, there is, it's kind of, it's, what is it like? It's a little complicated, but um, yeah, you take with a D pawn. Maybe Rook C1 makes sense here. I guess another thing is like taking, taking, and taking. Like Yeah, but then after exchanges, Rook D2, and yeah. suddenly all the second rank and the pawn on F2 and B2 and Bishop A6, he did go for this line. So what's wow. ha what's happening after C6? What's going to happen? Any predictions? Well, there was Bishop E5, right? So we said that well, Bishop played e5. pawn takes E5. Yes, yes. Rook C1. Okay, Rook C1. so now she's threatening uh, Rook C6 with a cool checkmate coming up. Or bishop takes e5 and rook c6 also mm -hmm. can be quite yep. unpleasant, although king b8. Queen b3, okay. now, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So how has 13 seconds? It's tough for her. She needs to play faster. Come on, come on. The position is great, but just, I don't know. A5, Any uh, move. Come on. Come make a move. I make a move. Very Four, hard. three, two, 
Oof, my gosh, she made a yeah. move. Just she made a cool. move. She has four seconds. I do think Katarina will win based on the time situation, but, uh, you know. But still, they, they get this one additional one second. second. Yeah, it's not much. And we know that Howe can definitely lose on time. So, like, I just, I, I think Katarina will will find a way to win. This bishop is amazing. There's no real attack by White. She's got the 30 seconds, and I think she will flag Did her. She forget? Did she forget about time or just... Because this switch from five plus one to three plus one does make uh, a difference. Come on, make a yeah. move. She's making a move on like very, very last seconds. Right. Okay. Now Katerina is she also needs to figure out how to get a rook here. King D eight and rook seven. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't surprise me. I mean, okay, White's position is sort of improving, but it doesn't really matter so much about position now. Queen a five, Queen takes g four. <gasps> yep, it's exactly oh. the prediction. You know, she's just uh, she's worse on the seconds. Like it's, it is likely that she will lose on time when she's got those couple of seconds. But again, if you are not comfortable when playing on seconds on very very last seconds. You should avoid yeah. those kind of situations. <laughs> I agree. She should avoid it. <laughs> um, all right. Okay. So Katarina. Knight of three, E6, G3. Back to the Sicilian. How you find? Good choice. She's E6 Sicilian, which we haven't seen today yet. And now uh, Katarina. Yeah, 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 exactly. She goes into a sideline. And why in the world is How thinking? She well, has... she's choosing. I believe there are several oh, yeah, but... move orders and systems. She was not expecting to see G3 from Katerina. Yeah, but half, half a minute is a bit long for a three-minute game on move, uh, <laughs> move four. So I don't know. She uh, had a nice long think. Mm -hmm. And now they're in the King's Indian attack. Okay, wow. Yeah. So... So Katerina is, uh, just has an extra tempo, right? And her favorite King's Indian with the mm -hmm. colors reversed. Okay, so right now she doesn't have a knight on d2 yet, right? So there's they can play c4 here, right? That's the whole point. They can play knight c3. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, looks like a good opening choice by Katarina. She gets herself a little edge on the clock. How mm -hmm. doesn't see why didn't yeah. uh finally repeat the Petro if she didn't like the position she got? It's a good question. Why she didn't repeat it? I think um Maybe like having just lost a game, maybe she wants better. Yeah, sometimes to win. it's a mo well, she won. That's the problem. Rook C2. No, no but, I, but I mean, having lost the uh, most yeah. recent mm -hmm. game, you know, with, with, uh, with White. Yeah. Maybe she wanted something more aggressive. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about this D4 move. I mean, it's not like an illogical move, especially for Blitz. Like, I know it's not enough to equalize these positions. Like, White just gets this E4 square. I think Bishop F4, like D2. Visually, uh, it looks so much better for white. I mean, bishop f4, knight e2, knight e4, and again. So what to do against this attack? But maybe it's not that easy, right? Black has some counterplay, of course. But even here, after b3, b takes c4, if I take with the d pawn, d takes c4. How does black continue her attack on the queen side? What white is going to do, I see, right? Knight e2, knight e4 h5 and etc but what black is gonna do all righty so let's take a look b5 b3 takes takes yeah so the next move is knight d2 normally they want to go a5 a5 a4. bishop a6 a4 something like this yeah hmm. But I think it's it's certainly easier to play as white, right? These kinds of positions just go ninety four, but then watch out for d three, d three yeah. ninety two. Now, yeah, yeah. maybe ninety one even. Yeah. Watch out for that, guys, because that's a big tactic. Like here, your queen is stuck protecting the knight, but mm -hmm. knight c two is coming, and okay, maybe you can do it. By the way, Alexander, maybe you can sack an exchange. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of the world. Um, you have some good pieces, but I doubt that she will want to do that. I would yeah, be who knows? Surprised. Knight takes a yeah. one, knight g five. There, yes. Who knows? It might happen. Yeah. Oh, so okay. So it's oh, not. It's, just... it's it's ho. It's ho yifan. Okay. Ho so, yifan, yeah. yeah. So my Chinese pronunciation needs to be a little improved, guys. Um, I will work on that. So ho, ho yifan. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, I think is just our Chinese pronunciation yeah. should be yeah should can can be improved a lot. Actually, you know, it's not really uh, in chess. It's not actually disrespectful to call people by their last name. Mm -hmm. I would say, of course, um, yeah. I mean, you can you can do either, but definitely saying like uh, Nakamura played Bishop C eight. It's not it's not disrespectful. Yeah, and mm -hmm. address players by their last names. Right, but what's going on? Uh, there are a lot of things that's going on, actually. White went all in on the king side. Black pushed her pawn to a4 exchange on b3, opened up the a file. So Black is trying to um, get through via the a file. White is hoping for the best on the king side. Uh, well, Again, if white does not checkmate black, black is going to win. <laughs> Usually it's <laughs> as simple as that because I think strategically black's position is uh, like potentially it's good. So what do you think what do you think white wants to do on the king side Alexandra? Like do you think she wants to play h6 or black will just go g6 and it's not really that bad? Yeah, so I think they want to open up this uh hmm. king Maybe side one somehow. day like that. You know, you never know. Some exchange stacks could be possible. Some tactics on the diagonal. Um, we're still waiting for this move, but there's always D3. And we shall not forget about time. Again, time, time, mm -hmm. time. Definitely uh, it's on Katarina's side now, but it's still close enough. Oh, wait, we got more moves. We got Rook A8. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, guys. I keep the board updated. There we go. But it's interesting to see that Black just gave up this A file because I thought that her plan would be connected somehow with, you know, 92, 93, trying to double on uh, the A file. No, instead, Hulifan just exchanged um, a pair of rooks and she played D3 and Knight C2. Rook A7, I like that. Rook takes B7 is an idea. That yeah, you see, oh, wow. yeah. and queen takes this three. That's great. That's a great exchange for white, definitely. Huh? Knight e four, knight f six. Oh, it's so hard to play against. Those okay, thirteen pieces. seconds. Uh, she's gonna need some luck. That like white's not gonna have some winning move here. Mm -hmm. uh, knight f six looks really tempting, doesn't well, it? Well, king h eight. Yeah, and then then what? Queen d three or queen e four? Queen d three. Yeah. So she did yeah. it, guys. Look at that. She's going all in. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Oh, queen h h six knight g five. Knight yep. g five is gonna gonna finish it off because knight takes f seven is a checkmate. Oh, oh, what? Okay, well, it's not Rook bad. Takes g five. Rook. Uh, but, but this okay. is not as good. Wait, wait. Now it's gonna get random because the fun fun part, guys. Totally the random. random. Oops. But now the queen is trapped. It's not that random. I, I. Oh no. Oh no. Katarina. Why yeah, didn't Marina. she? Ah, it was a check. Okay. She's down a rook, so things Queen are pretty bad. Queen five, yeah. How found it, you know. But still, it's not so clear. Uh, still, I mean, the tension is high. Okay, you need to play faster. Katerina will not resign. She's not going to resign. She will try to use the fact that Hoi Fine is not very comfortable on playing on seconds. Ah, but Katerina lost on time. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Um. I think White had a great position at some point in that game, but okay, in time trouble. Wow. In time I have trouble, to say, yeah, uh, Katarina, uh, how Ho got some luck in this game. All right. <laughs> well, this luck, I mean, she was uh, defending very well. I mean, Rook G7, Knight G8, this idea, right? It's very hard to defend. It's so hard to defend on seconds, but she kept cool. And somehow she managed. She managed to stop yeah. the attack. She managed not to fall apart. Yeah. And, and what do we have? We have again the same story, which H6, G5. You know what I was up. thinking about, Alexandra? I was like, maybe the chat just played like an evil trick on me. They told me that I was pronouncing her her name the wrong way, made me pronounce it this way. And, you know, maybe it's all a trick. I don't know. Maybe I should. Oh, you know, when I'm commentating in Russian, there are always so many people complaining about me saying last names of players not correctly because there are so many nuances. So, okay, well, we do our best 
and um, sometimes of course we're not fluent in Chinese so we can make pronunciation mistakes but what to do right we're here we gathered here for chess and for excitement and I think it's it's just a question of, on what we focus. Of course, we can focus on our mistakes, pronunciation mistakes. Uh, yeah, but I All think right. it would be better to focus on something that's going on on the board. Look at it: G five, B four. Some excitement. Yeah, so we got the same line that they had a couple of games ago, where how, where Yifan. Uh, <laughs> that's why i say how you find it's not so difficult yeah, to pronounce right. both just in case right? that's right how you find <laughs> no that's the thing they're gonna tell me the way i was pronouncing it is wrong i have to say how you find and it's like it's hard for me because i'm so used to saying it the other way all right so but now look at it knight takes f2 how you find <laughs> yeah so she, she is in trouble i think no it seems that uh, white is in trouble unless it's some kind okay, of okay g4 line. is coming yeah Logno yes. is going to be winning the exchange. Wow. Ah, but knight d5, queen takes f3, the pawn is hanging on f7, the knight is jumping, I mean, it's heading to f6. Maybe it's yeah, not maybe, so... Yeah, maybe, but there's bishop, there's bishop e6. Okay, but I agree. It's not completely over for sure. So, oh, wow. Nice move. Knight e7. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Controlling d5 square. Indeed. Indeed. And... We see Robert Hess in chat. So every everything oh. is under control in our chat. We can, nice. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can <clears throat> finally focus on the board. All right, Bishop D two. So she hasn't taken this knight yet, but probably soon. What else is she thinking about? Does she wanna? Yeah, okay, Rook G eight. So she threw that move in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how black, to evaluate yeah. this position? I see that they Valbar uh, prefers black. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think I mean she's just gonna take the exchange at some points, right? And I don't really see the compensation. Bishop B6 is gonna come. Exactly. So how you find uh, misplay it again? Misplay yeah. it again. Why why does she keep going to this Italian game? Oh, I mean, that's the second game where she's struggling with white, or at least it feels this way. She had a great, I mean. Result, I think, in the first segment was the Ruy Lopez, bishop c5. Okay, well, she lost a few games, but it wasn't because of the opening. Right, and Katarina is playing very, very quickly here. Um, does this move threaten anything? I suppose knight d5 is the threat. Well, what happens on knight d5? Is it just pawn takes, pawn takes, and then, yeah, and then go somewhere and attack the pawn? Got it. Exactly. White is just behind mm -hmm. in, her, in creating yeah. any counter threats. So the reason, uh, yeah, the eval bar is favoring black so much, guys, is actually because their king is going to get mated right now. Just as simple as that. Yeah, the king is in trouble. Well, chess is all yeah. about checkmating your opponent's king faster, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, before you get a chance to take the knight and win that bishop, some bad stuff is going to happen on the g5. Oof, queen h8, nice. Okay, yeah. Also, checkmate in a couple of moves threat. I'm um, not sure why not queen g6, but probably there was a reason to that. Yeah, well, probably both moves were winning. Okay, so where is she going to move her king? Oh, she chose neither of my arrows. <laughs> yeah, she picked uh, a different move. Yeah, sure. That's fine. There's no checks, and okay, I think... Mm -hmm. Who is going to resign soon? Mm -hmm. Well, that was quite a sad game uh, for Hoi Fine. She was playing white, and look at the position. Look at the position. Not kind of game you want to have when playing white. Yeah, this really didn't work out. Okay, is there a checkmate? Yeah, Coming? should be. Well, King G3. I mean, she's going to run. Maybe she'll just win the bishop. What do you think? Well, I think she always, win the yes, you always want yeah. to checkmate, but a free bishop is good enough. Yeah, quite a dominant play by Katerina, and she yeah. evens the score six and a half to six and a half. Um, and we're gonna see another King's Indian with the reverse colors, but it didn't. Wow. Well, 
I don't know. The game was complicated. For me, it's always hard to uh, to evaluate uh, this kind of positions because, again, it feels that Black's counterplay on the Queen's side should be enough for some counterplay. But again, if somehow White's attack uh, starts to build up, then it can be over for Black in an, in just mm -hmm. a second. So she goes back to the same line she already played. It's a dangerous line to be going into, but now maybe she's saying she's not going to castle. That's the thing. She's made a little adjustment. Mm -hmm. And we know that on bishop f4, g5 is an idea. So very interesting. Okay, by, by Ho Yifan. And... No, I just think Ho Yifan liked uh, Katerina's plan so much with h6, g5, you know, uh -huh. opening up the king side that she decided to give it a try herself. She thought... Well, since Katerina, I mean, won so easily with black pieces, just opening up the king side, maybe I should try. I, I should give it a try. Wow. Look at <laughs> okay, that. it was a different Lashing opening. Out. Yeah, b4. Okay, knight let's... takes b4, I guess knight takes d4 is the idea, some sort of discovery. Mm -hmm. um, is that even that good? I mean, I, I guess I guess it's pretty good. I don't know, knight takes b4, knight takes d4, bishop b7. I wouldn't say that you can't go for that. I mean, I know you don't have to, but I don't think that like... And then knight b5, knight no. c3. I mean, white's pieces start to... Yeah. Jumping. Jumping, jumping. Well, yeah. okay. I mean, it does seem like playable. Knight, knight uh, 1 to c3, and then yeah. knight trying to get to e4 and then to d6. Of course, a6, you're going to play at yeah, some point. Yeah, a6 right? at some point, right? Well, I think it's an interesting moment for her for this choice, and she takes with the pawn, okay? Mm -hmm. um, Katarina, oh, yeah, well, Katarina can't take this pawn yet because that attacks her queen. Mm -hmm. So she's basically just sacked a pawn for now. Yep. Yep. Is she going to get it back? Oh, that's a good question, yes, because for the moment it's not so clear. It's not so clear whether White uh, got enough compensation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's no clear attack here, I suppose. White... Well, it's rather positional, yeah. Bishop yeah. f4, h5, knight d2, knight e4, trying, I don't know, queen g4, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then bishop f4, you still have to worry about that or not so much. Maybe not yes. so much yet. Maybe, maybe not maybe. yet, but at some point. Oh, by the way, I get it. She wants to castle queenside, Alexander. Yes. I often yes. forget, you know, the yes. black can actually castle queenside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, you're so used to the king either already being there. Um, but, you know, that's just an additional idea. I think I think Ho Yifan will definitely be interested in, uh, in going queenside. H5. So Katerina decides to... And stop this G5 idea. Mm -hmm. mm. Bothering her on this square, reminding her that she doesn't have an A2 pawn. Well, so far I'm liking, you know, uh, Hui Fan's play. This game reminds me a little bit of this uh, positional masterpiece that Katerina created, a dark square masterpiece. Somehow yeah. black also kind of blockades using yeah. the black squares, uh, white's position. I wonder if we're going to see as beautiful games in the three minute as we saw in the five minute. I'm not so sure. Yeah. Well, less time you have, more difficult it is to create something like uh, very deep, right? So yeah. you don't really expect that. It's more intuitional, of course, more mistakes, but what to do, more tension. How's this pawn going to be protected? Maybe I... just by castling long sides, just ignoring the fact Ignore. that it's hanging. Yeah. And then mm. and then rook d to g8 if you dare to take yeah. it. Yeah. I'll take it. Oh, look at that. I Ooh. I thought about this move. I'm so proud, Ooh. Alexandra. Like I put an arrow on that square. <laughs> but what about c5? Let's let's sacrifice. All right. Now can we just castle? C5. There you go. Beautiful queenside uh... castling. Okay. I want to see c5. But now c5, bishop takes c5. 
Okay, yeah, maybe maybe it was the same after C5. <laughs> so rook G8, interesting move because there's no more bishop H6. So what's her idea with rook G8? Does she want to go just G6 actually? I think she does. Well, I don't know. It's an idea to go G6. Oh, there's no knight E4 because of knight E5. Ah, I didn't realize that. I didn't yeah. realize that. Now G5 might be... Mm -hmm. she's, she's, sitting on, she's sitting uh, on sort of against attacking this pawn because she wants to stop knight e4, very important, because that way white doesn't really get much of an initiative. King b8, I think we'll see, or king b7. Probably um, b8, like, feels safer for some reason. Or a5, but, I mean, yeah. Uh-huh, bishop c5, all right. Mm. Yeah, probably she wants just to close the side first. She's not in a hurry to start yeah. uh, her attack on the king side. That's interesting. So she's making all those prophylactical moves. Queen c7 whoa, against knight e4. Is that really what she meant to play? It was not about. Well, you need to make a move. That's the problem. 16 seconds on the oh. clock. Ah, she was she was preparing for knight e4 somehow. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Okay, because there was an intermediate hmm. check on f3. Yeah, okay. this game, uh, I think Ho Yufan is going to win. Her time situation is pretty good. White's compensation for the pawn is not so evident. Well, let's wait. Let's wait. Yeah. It's not so clear how to break through. And white has this plan with doubling the rook on the A file and then playing f4 and g4. I mean, I wouldn't uh, be so sure. I wouldn't be so sure. Hmm. Because the knight on c6 is stuck there, right? So it, it should protect the pawn on a5. Actually, I like it. has a nice plan. Just... She's putting the king on b6. I like the okay. king there. It's very Rook safe. to a1. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now she just needs to find some way to improve her position. Maybe just go there and like then move her knight. Yeah, she's yes. going to want to trade queens. It's pretty smart. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, by the way, don't want... Bishop yeah, don't takes before sometimes, you need to still remember. Bishop takes before, rook takes before, queen yeah, takes Yeah, okay, before. now queen c7 wins the pawn. That's a game ah, over. That's, that's a bad... Yeah, that's a bad... Uh, that's very bad. This yeah. kind of position, sometimes, you know, it. you hold it, hold it, hold it. three, maybe. No, not, well, now she has to, you know, Oops. stay calm. Queen c5, okay. Mm -hmm. Or king b7, okay. Knight c6, d4... Not so bad, Katerina managed somehow yeah. to get yeah. back into play. Queen takes Rook three. I mean, looks pretty annoying. Ah, uh, yeah. Ninety-five. Yeah, a few checks. Have a couple always, of checks. It's Take always pleasant. Five. No draw. Okay. Mm, take on d five. Mm. Cool. Oh, well, Katerina yeah. is holding, but yeah. Yeah, knight c6. D4 or something. Knight d3. Wow. Yeah, they have no time. She could actually flag. Knight takes g4. Oh, okay. Now she's not going yes. to Okay, well, that's that's hard. Wow, she only has one second. She needs to play faster. Oh, wait. That no, was, no, no. Yeah, Everything no. is on. Yeah, oh, you thought had time. Yeah. It was, it was what's, kind of what's going on with white? I mean, white is struggling for the moment. White is losing, well, at least they yeah. lost two last games, and they lost in a style that you where you don't want to play with white pieces anymore. So something needs to be adjusted, and we find she is going to this line again. This H6 is what Katarina has been doing. Well, maybe she would change and, and play something else, because rookie 1, d4, so bishop a7 should be played. Because I did not like what she did in her two games, previous games. She lost, right? Both of them with her white pieces. Right. Or at least she struggled. Ah, white lost all three plus one games. Exactly, guys. What What's going wow. on? I mean, what's going on? White is in trouble. Black is okay. <laughs> yeah, time for a new Adorian book. Mm -hmm. um... Okay, well, D4... Why did play d4 after playing d3? Now we wonder why. Uh, okay, let's see. And so now it's what? another pawn sack. What is she going to take with? Maybe with a g pawn. Maybe um, she won't sack the pawn. Probably she won't. She'll probably take. Okay, she did. She did sack she the pawn. Does, she does. She likes that what? idea. Um, but I mean, it shouldn't be good. Yeah, what's the compensation after just castles or something? 95. Looks pretty strong. Attacking the queen after queen g3, knight h5 knight is H5, possible. Yeah. It's a big uh, one. Well, it looks a little bit too 
Maybe just over take... optimistic. Or maybe actually just castle. It's time to castle. Okay, she went for d3. She keeps this extra pawn for the moment. And yeah, it's not so easy to win it back. Yeah, I don't know what happened and why. Why Horrifying insists on playing this opening uh, where she has been struggling in the last game. She's definitely not the player who, you know, keeps only one opening. We've seen her play Rui Lopez in the match against Valentina. She started playing Reti opening at some point, so she can switch. Uh, and I'm not sure why she keeps insisting. Yeah, and you know, well, she does change, right? So she did play this game differently. Oh, but wow. the problem is, it's but it feels the same because it's like this kind of pawn sacks that don't really work out seems to be the approach. So, okay. style. Yes, yeah, style. Wow. This is. I really, I really think Alexandra that this game might finally put her off of playing this way. Like, I think she's going to make a change for the next game because this could be that ugly. Mm -hmm. 21 minutes till the end of this time control. That means we're going to see at least one more game of hers. Of yeah. We find those white pieces. Well, you know, she has a knight on a3, which is pretty and terrible. Too she bad. Has a bishop on g3, which is also a problem. So it's too bad. H4 yeah. is coming up. H4, There's... you're going to have to give away the bishop, then either knight takes or. I think knight takes, takes a5 and g4. Well, White is trying, desperately trying to complicate. Of course, if you're in a lost position, that's what you need to do. You need to somehow try to distract your opponent to shake up this position, not to give time. Yeah, good try. I mean, C4, I definitely appreciate that try. Mm -hmm. Didn't seem to do too much to help out this night. I mean, Katarina responded with a very solid move. I would consider King H1 probably now. With the idea after h4 to uh, capture on e5 and try to prepare f4 after knight takes e5. Okay, so queen f6. So she's, yeah, she's gearing up to play h4. There's a lot of pressure on the f2 pawn. And I mean, the biggest problem of white's position is it's just really out of play knight. Yes. I mean, besides, well, there are many problems. <laughs> yeah, besides the fact that she's down a pawn. Mm -hmm. uh, she's down a pawn. She has a bad knight. Black has a stronger center. So lots of issues. And she is now getting lower on time. Well, not surprisingly, when you have a bad position, it's very hard to play fast. Yeah. So, wow. Wow. Rook takes a six. She's trying to solve it. the problem of the knight. Oh, the problem solved. You just give up your rook and that's it. Yeah, bishop d5 and knight b5. Although she's hoping that there could be some tricks here. I mean, it was basically, it's a, it's a try in a desperate situation. That's good. Well, that's excellent. That's excellent. You see, sometimes um, a pawn is worse of a rook. Yeah, rook c8, I think. I wonder what she's thinking about. Because... Knight takes b5. I don't know. She's trying. Maybe she's... Yeah, bishop c5. e5. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Oof, ah, whoa, that's what? what she was thinking. What wow. is she going to do after bishop wow. takes a8? What is her idea? Okay. There must be something very clever here. That commentators didn't quite get. Yeah. Okay, just as simple as h4. Okay. So, she, oh, she wants to take with the queen, queen takes e5. and checkmate yeah. on h2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Nice, because it's actually impossible to defend because of the presence of this bishop on the diagonal. I like told you. It doesn't work. Because King h1 was to Yeah, she be just played. takes and the queen is coming in and it's game over. Nice game by Katarina. I think this will really inspire Hoi Fawn to make some changes to this wide opening. Yeah, zero out of three in the same exact line with white pieces. Seems to be quite, quite a tricky choice. Okay, g4 checkmate is coming. <laughs> it's too bad. Yeah, the position is just too bad. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad game, but uh, very well played by Katerina. Nope. 
and you know seven and a half seven and a half it okay is d4 maybe d4 why did katarina stopped playing no uh, more open, open sicilians. sicilians yeah what's going on why do they keep insisting on playing the openings where mm -hmm. they keep don't do so well yeah i don't know why well, I mean, you know, we, we, and we've had a chance to ask all the players those questions during these uh, speed chess championships. And it's just that it's hard without getting a break to even really have time to think and to make that adjustment on the fly, right? When they have the breaks, they tend to uh, definitely change things up. But once you're already in the minute of it, uh, it, it, sort of in the, yeah, you're already in the middle of it, <laughs> then it's hard. And yeah, it hasn't worked out so well, but I don't think she's going to be playing B4 in this game. Yeah, it was a little bit over uh, not prepared right so 92 yeah. 94 bishop of four yeah same kind of plan h4 bishop of four 92 trying to bring her knight to e4 but but uh how you find she likes this uh she likes this <laughs> setup it worked out well for her and she's just trying to repeat it bishop b7 and the, having the option of castling queen side i think you know what katarina needs to do uh Maybe to play a move like a3 to prepare this kind of thing for later to make it a little bit more hard for black to castle queen side. That's what she's doing. But can, can't black play g5? Can't they just sacrifice a spawn? For example, here, just, just g5. Just as simple as that. Wow. G5 right here, yeah? Yep. Just Very thematic move for sure. And then we have to calculate like everything that happens like after something like um why did i i don't know well I, actually my idea was thing? after bishop takes g5 was just to castle long i was not going to uh, ah. win back this pawn on e5 my mm -hmm. intention was just to you know to open up the h file yeah. well, as, as robert fisher once said right <laughs> open up the h file check check and checkmate but okay, yeah, with the bishop on g2, it's not so obvious, but... a5. Mm, okay. I don't know. Is that prophylaxis necessary? g5 was certainly very interesting. Oh, it's okay. always in the air. Okay, knight e4. White gave up the central pawn. Wow. Knight c5. So... Okay, some tactics. Some tactics. Crazy tactical lines are on the board. Uh, we're not sure what's going on. We're going to oh. calculate pieces and pawns. <laughs> yeah, but we do second. know there's a check coming, and that's important. Uh, is it yeah. so bad? I mean, white didn't get what they wanted, because now white's going to be playing without a center with this bad pawn, and black is just going to be castling an f6 and e5, maybe. I mean, yeah, f6 and g5, maybe. Yeah, I don't know away. if she missed this check, but maybe it's just not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, somehow these tactics did not work out well for Katarina, but um, okay, King D7. King D7, okay. Wow. Nice. How is playing very confidently, very quickly? Well, yeah, she sees that square on H1 and she wants to open up the H file. Exactly. Well, she can take on H4. She takes H4. It's not really opening the H file, but it's opening the G file, which can be equally good. The rook is going to come to G8. And then, so you think she might just take, yeah, okay, f5. f5. Mm, what does she want to do with that move? Like f4 at some point? And then rookie oh. one. A rookie one. Can I yeah. play rookie one? With the, I, idea the problem with this move actually is that she really weakens the square, yeah, because now right, exactly, like, yeah, can, can't I take on a6? Rook takes a6. <laughs> King takes, well yeah. it doesn't seem they to had be to enough. really calculate that maybe yeah yes yes you don't sacrifice your rook for nothing yeah bishop f4 well now katarina definitely has an initiative and hose king in on d7 looks a little um shaky shaky yeah there's well Queen it's a f7. question yes is she gonna survive this because okay if she does then white's king is also not the best Maybe okay. It so can go either out. way, right? This yeah. position can go either way. Queen of seven, rook f eight. So for the moment, she protected the pawn on e six. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Rook f six is her plan. But then there's bishop. Well, bishop e five. It doesn't Oops. look to be very. I think, I think she blundered that actually. I think that's a, just a clear blunder because why? Why else would she do rook f eight? Okay, bishop e5, rook h to f8, sacrificing the uh, Okay, okay, not so bad, yeah, because white's king is kind of open as well. That makes some sense. 
Mm-hmm. All right, so they're getting down to a minute. But then queen h1, queen h1, I like the move. Bishop takes f6, rook takes f6, and queen h1. Maybe Try. I'm not doing so badly in the end game. You know, if I trade queens, I have my rook on g6, bishop on d6, I do have one pawn for the exchange. Maybe, but uh, you can also play queen d6 and keep the queens on the board. Queen b7, king g8. And it kind of escapes to f7. All right. We'll see. We'll see. Mm. So you see, Katerina is considering to take or not to take. It's not such an obvious question to her. She yeah, decides if, to play B4. Wow. Wow, wow. She likes this move. She liked the move, right? B4. Wow. Trying to undermine this pawn. Pawn takes. Mm -hmm. And then Bishop oh. is... I mean, I don't know. I, I get the computer is liking this, but I'm feeling like this is going to be harder for her to manage, actually. That decision. All right, because she didn't she didn't win the exchange and she didn't win this pawn and now she can't even attack it. Well, she believes so, in the center. In the center she's pawn. heading to d4, right? She wants to win that pawn and she considers it to be more important than the rook even. Yeah, important that black exchange. cannot put any rooks on the g file. So black's rooks are more passive here. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is so sharp. This is really interesting. Uh, I mean, after bishop takes, I don't know, bishop d6, I Okay, queen h6, rook g8. I'm not sure if I would take that pawn because I was like, I didn't want that rook there. But look at the kings. <laughs> they kind of yeah. uh, king d7, king f2. It's not the squares where you usually wow. see the kings. A3. It's so sharp and it's like so hard to make good decisions when you got seconds in such a sharp, complicated position. Oof, d4, queen takes c4. It doesn't look good for white. Is she going right. to play d5? What What's she going to do? I mean, I guess so. Just open up completely the king. Queen d5 okay, and then try to make feel. some sort of threat. Queen h4. You okay. should watch out for rook d2 now, for a2, example. A2. Oh, a2, rook d2, a1. So I think yeah. I can do it. I think I can go a2, but then you go rook a3. Well, who knows? She decides to yeah. make so, a safer move, but you see the eval bar jumping. You see that it gave white a possibility yeah. to give a few checks, which is not right. that bad, and win back this pawn on a3, which right. is great. Okay. Okay. So well, she's trying okay. to make a draw. Yeah, it's gonna be a draw. <laughs> four rooks end game. We're gonna see a four rook end games. No, two rook end games. Okay. Oh, okay. So Ho Yufan decided she'd had enough of this. You know, she didn't want to risk too much at the end. Um, but White managed to make one draw. What a significant achievement already for White. Are yeah. we gonna see another Italian? No. Right, no. No. You see, no. she 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 That's got the, the right memo. Choice. Right, bishop yeah. to b five. That's that's better. I, I I don't know what's what what was going wrong uh, with White in this Italian with h six g five, but definitely it's better to prepare at home if you're not very well prepared. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. That what actually I checked in the in the break. I checked uh, the c three d four line that they played in the first game. Wow, because... Alexandra, you did that. No, because I, I, I was... just made myself some tea. I, I only had time to get hot water from my. No, tea. I was wondering because I played this line with white. I didn't remember this d4, and actually d4 is not a good move. That who you find played in the first game. Ah. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, now it's a different story. Okay, because now she's castled. First of all, okay. Yes. Now this is looking a lot better for white. Like, I mean, better than other positions that she's had. Uh, this line, I mean, is evaluated it as an equal line, but yeah, maybe it's easier to play for white for the moment. Maybe bishop e3 and queen f3, but okay, but I understand there's always knight d4, right. yeah, yeah, and there's knight d5 right away. So this pawn is still the big problem. And if you ever move your queen in, they're definitely going to take the knight, right? Mm -hmm. That's a funny position with a uh... Quite an interesting pawn structure, right? You don't usually see if white manages to finish her development and to keep this pawn on d5 alive, white will be better. So the question is whether it's going to be possible or not. Yeah. So now queen d3 attacking this pawn. I don't know. I would just play knight d5 and... 
and then what lose after night f5 i don't know yeah you need to calculate there yeah I, I would seven. Play it and then yeah even though it's the most dangerous move in the position yeah well but again if you can take this pawn yeah no i don't I, I have a feeling like you can't i don't know i feel like this is just too much 97 that was back wow there's nothing you're you even you even managed to cover the g6 square which is not very nice that was my idea yeah i can't you know what i'm saying guys is like the knight covers that so i can't bring in my queen there that's too bad okay well i mean sometimes it it looks scary but if there are no okay but Katarina decided not to take anything she just played rookie mm -hmm. eight protecting the pawn on b5 for the moment and well she has this knight takes d5 in mind of course she is considering this move but yeah. at the same time yeah okay exchanging on b5 bishop d2 maybe just connect rookie one bishop d2 rookie one maybe knight c6 knight to c6 wow now who finds idea after knight takes a six to capture on c6 and then to capture on h6 yep. and use this g6 square that you want to use yeah well those pretty, two bishops are very it's pretty tricky look, look at that mm -hmm. people often especially beginners they don't really um see the possibilities of these long range pins that that queen would have this g6 square but yeah, queen e4, solid move by Katarina. She blocks the diagonal, offers a queen trade. And in the end game, she's actually totally fine. At, I mean, maybe even better because she has a center pawn versus the side pawn. And yeah, also, but I wouldn't be yeah. so sure. I don't know. Two bishops and this side pawn. I mean, it it's a lost pawn end game if we evaluate it with no yeah. pieces on the board. So I don't know, queen g3, queen g4. And for example... Like the main issue in this end game, I think, is this bishop on c5, which is so strong, and yep. it puts such a pressure on f2, mm -hmm. and the rook on f1 is kind of stuck to protecting this pawn, and it cannot, you know, move to the e file. That's the main problem. Why it is not yeah. going to exchange on e4? Okay, so white played queen g3, queen. Yeah, G4. but okay. black, black insists. Yeah, now bishop f4, bishop g3. And then rook e1. That's all right. So definitely how you how Ho Yufan is struggling to make a draw here. And rook again, you see some, some bad luck for white. I maybe she should sure. just go to play knight of three. It can't it can't be any worse than these positions that she's getting. But maybe it's not that bad. I mean, this position. I was thinking about just okay, capturing... like a pawn. Yes, it's, it's a pawn. She she didn't want to give up a pair of two bishops, but I was thinking of taking on c4 and playing rook d2. Yes, it's very passive, but how bad white's position was after that? That king f1, I mean, was it that bad? Okay, game I over. I was not so sure. That was such... Fuck one. Oh my gosh, yeah. what happened? Just a fork. He just walked, she walked into a fork. Oh, and Katarina takes that's... the lead. That's what I meant. Why not catch? Oh, we finally support? see an open Sicilian. Finally, and Katerina also decided to give it, to give uh, it a change, right? Katerina is leading nine to eight, nine to eight. Still quite a tense match. Yep, and we're getting into another Shevinigan structure. <laughs> yes. Um. So even though it com coming from an E6 Sicilian, but Ho Yifan, she wants to play. Um this Shevening and structure of the pawns on e6 d6 okay so now we're gonna see c3 i suppose when A more positional approach right yeah mm -hmm. ah okay very nice counter-attacking makes sense although i don't know she's playing e5 here yeah well knight b3 always war now okay Ooh, knight maybe five was... take it maybe take it and just d5 and e4 Mm -hmm. yeah no you're gonna you're taking that night that night is not staying there i know it can i know we can play g6 but i think well g6 kind of helps uh white's knight to okay. come closer to d5 yeah i'm uh I'm, i mean i'm surprised that this wasn't on her agenda like this just seems so nice it does but maybe bishop g5 
and yeah, bishop takes f6 or bishop f6 yeah okay it's a, it's a bit know. unclear yeah mm -hmm. okay but definitely something to think about uh c4. look at that wow well first of all this knight on a2 is not perfection but it's heading to c1 and then d3 for example if black plays a5 Bishop e3, knight c1, knight g3. We see this kind of maneuver in different slabs, right? Yeah, but the Sicilian is working out quite well for Ho Yifan. Uh, the knight went one to day. h6. What? What's what's going on with white knights? The one knight is on a2, the other knight is on h6. Guys, where did you go? What's happening? What happens at knight b4? Knight on the rim. Yeah, what exactly is the... Okay, it's, oh, it's losing, but why? Why? Oh, because on bishop d2, there's... Knights, two knights. Yes, knight oh, d4, the knight bishop d6. Yeah, the bishop cannot defend both knights, so she just basically walked into a losing pin. She clearly forgot about that strand at knight on h6. White. Two white, yeah, four. For this knights, for poor creatures. They need to be closer to the center. That's why, guys, sometimes if you put your pieces weirdly just tactics never work for you yeah i mean you can you know computers sometimes they can put uh, its pieces on completely chaotic squares but for human beings it's just uh, one one inaccurate move and the game is over i think they're gonna be tied going into the bullet Mm -hmm. but Although, wait wait yeah. moment. they're gonna be one more game she, she, she's gonna yeah. resign she's I gonna think, re Katerina. Yeah, she's going to resign. They play one more game, but she might play on. She might play on in order to not to play one more game with three plus one, because again, it kind of increases the yeah. time of uh, the match. And since it's already three hours, like the whole match, why to play some extra games? Well, the position yeah, is I just think that's a smart strategy, and I think she will try to keep it going. Oh, no. Ah, no, we were wrong. We were wrong. She just was so disgusted with her position that she mm -hmm. says, okay, let's play one more. Well, in that okay. case, her choice. good chance that someone is going to go ahead. Okay, uh, knight c3, safe her. But you know what? d4, e takes d4, knight takes d4, knight takes e4. No. There is a new uh, line that black plays nowadays. I discovered it recently, like and this. it's not yes, like this. Wow, what, I, what I, is this? That's uh, that's a new way what, to like this or what? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, something like this. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. It's not so easy and to guard the knight. It's not that bad. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. But okay. No, something more more classical. Yeah. So they're going in for something very solid. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think Ho Yifan just trying to avoid big adventures in this game. Mm -hmm. I think not a bad choice. Not a bad choice. Yeah, given how things have been going. But yeah, it's, it's really turning out to be the kind of finale we want, right? So close, <laughs> high quality games, um, mm -hmm. really like nice things that we saw, especially in the five minute from both of them. Uh, three minute, I feel was... Oh, it was definitely more random, right? Like, it's what you would expect. And, um, well, yeah, the quality goes down as you go into shorter time control. So I don't know. Like, do you remember something really outstanding we saw in the three-minute portion? Uh, hard to say, because at some point, you know, all those games, they start to look as one long game. Uh, but uh, what I would remember from... This three plus one segment is definitely white struggling, yeah, in many games. In many games, so now who we find decided to like play the safest, the safest opening possible. It's still quite tricky. Uh, it's considered to be drawish because there are many lines uh, where they almost forced, forced the lead to uh, end games with opposite colored bishops. Yep. Um, but at the same time with this pair of isolated pawns, it's tricky. It might might become quite unpleasant. Yeah, you know what's interesting is like I have no idea why the computer eval bar is giving an edge to white here. Mm -hmm. No idea. Black center looks good. I think her move rook d8 supporting d5 was good. 
I guess but the, maybe bishop b5 yeah. at some point. I don't know. Some, yeah. I know uh, it doesn't I mean, look good. And then bishop f6, I was thinking, but no. Maybe bishop c4, I mean, yeah. maybe, actually. Maybe. You know, maybe bishop c4 and try to win this pawn. It's actually not not so bad, right? Mm -hmm. you think about, yeah, b3 is actually quite clever. Did you play rook e? Wow, bishop b5, come on. Bishop b5, oh, man. Oy, 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 oy. Yeah. Yeah, okay, this is the kind of stuff where we start seeing the fatigue of the players. Yeah, 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 definitely. Katerina got tired. That's why probably it was not such a bad idea to play on in the previous game. Okay, yes. the position was completely lost, but just to wait. You know, when you start yeah. wondering, when you lose, you always have this emotional... Um, I, I find it yeah. very useful to be able to stop, to make a pause after you lose... Uh, one game because yeah. those games they go one after another and somehow there is a, a moment in the match when you can start losing in a row so if you have a chance to just to stop to pause if you have this one additional extra minute on your clock just yeah stop it and, and yeah, i totally pull. agree mm -hmm. i mean what she did is kind of typical because when a chess player knows their position is hopeless they don't really want to just play on to stretch out the time but the speech mm -hmm. chess championship has that uh, specificity where each portion has an allotted amount of time and you can run out the clock if you wanted to finish the games in that portion. Um, so I don't know, but chess players, they kind of tend to be more honorable, a lot of them, right? So well, they... just the position was so bad, I think that she didn't even consider stopping. Sometimes it's difficult to stop. You know, it's similar to my daughter, for example, now playing tennis, and I see sometimes she loses a ball and she goes and like serves immediately without taking this time to stop. Mm -hmm. And and when we lose, I mean, I when I lose personally, I also tend to press this next game button as soon as possible just to get rid of those bad emotions to start a new one. But actually stopping and taking a few <laughs> few breaths, it it might help. It's it's more difficult psychologically sometimes to stop, but it's very important. Yeah. Uh. Well, maybe maybe Queen E five hangs. Well, the yeah. Pawn. The position, of course, is hopeless for um poor Black. Now it doesn't really matter. Maybe again, now she decides to. <laughs> use this time that she has. Oh, I know what's work. a good plan. I really like the pawn on C3. I also mm -hmm. like coming back. Yeah, coming back in F3 and coming into E7. Mm -hmm. I, can she just go there? I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's all good. I mean, there's no, no, no issues with how she's playing. Um, I just don't want to play F3 with the rook here, but she doesn't seem to want to play F3 just yet. Maybe she'll go there and attack on the H file. I would, okay, now she's just grabbing pawns. Nope, not blundered F2. Yeah, okay, game over. Yeah, too bad. Yeah, she will be, she, she's giving up a game basically with that big blunder. One point lead to, uh, to Ho Yifan going into the bullet. So here we go, guys. We just finished uh, the, fir the first two portions of the match. Really close match. Ho Yifan finally getting the upper hand a little bit due to this blunder by Katarina Logno, who just lost two games in a row. Uh, before we go on break, guys, we want to let you know about the Global Chess Championships on chess.com. So they're happening live in Toronto, Ontario on November 2nd. That Those are the finals of the Global Chess Championships live in Toronto, November 2nd. Ch the best in the world are going to be um, fighting it out for their share of a million dollar prize pool. And Ho Fan is actually gonna be there including several former World Chess Championships. So type exclam CGC in the chat for all the information and we will see you uh, in a few minutes for the billet portion. Coach K says that when you first start the game, you look at that chess piece as you, you are the king on that board. I got this tattoo approximately a year ago. I got a, the king piece and my girl got a queen piece. Technically, I don't really play unless I come to jail. That's the only time I've really been playing a lot. I 
talk trash about who be who, who garbage. If they give us a chance to play with the man, I most definitely would. For me, it was trying to give people not just the skills in this really interesting game, but so that the way they think changed too. All right, see you in a, in a, in a week. Mr. Scott, behave. <laughs> Dating back to 6th century India, Shaturanga is the earliest known form of chess and bore similarities to today's game. Variations of the game spread to the Sassanid Empire or modern day Iran, where they were taught to nobility. After hundreds of years, these early versions slowly converged into the modern game we enjoy today. Chess traveled east to China, where it evolved into a game called Xianqi. The game also traveled west, as Islam swept through Arabia, North Africa, and the Iberian Peninsula. By the Middle Ages, chess was being played throughout Europe. The game reached Mongolia through Silk Road routes, and Genghis Khan spread chess throughout the empire in the 1200s. As the European Renaissance ushered in an era of rebirth, chess became popular with the artists, scientists, and religious leaders who dominated Renaissance culture. In fact, it was a Catholic priest, Rui Lopez de Segura, who in 1561 published one of the earliest and most influential books on the game, which documented the priest's opening theories, including his namesake, the Rui Lopez, which is still a common opening nearly 500 years later. The 18th century ushered in an era of revolutions, most notably on the American continent. In France, and even in global industry. Napoleon Bonaparte was known to play chess with his generals. Benjamin Franklin, a founding father of the United States, was an avid chess player who penned the essay, The Morals of Chess, in 1786, where he wrote, Life is a kind of chess, in which we have often points to gain and competitors or adversaries to contend with. Have you ever wondered how much money the biggest names in chess, like Carlson, Vichy, and Kasparov, have taken home? We crunched the numbers and published a full inflation-adjusted analysis for championships, super tournaments, money matches, and more. Type slash prize winners in the chat to learn more. That seems like a really interesting statistic to, uh, to look up, Alexandra. Um, who has earned the most money in chess? Yeah, I'm expecting the same kind of uh, video done for women's chess. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you something really funny. I once saw something in you in chess magazine mm -hmm. where they added up all the money that people have won in the St. Louis tournaments. 
Right. And I was so surprised to find my name there. I was like, wow, that's a lot of money I've taken home over the years. <laughs> I never like I never thought about that, that it actually adds up, you know, when you've been playing for so long in St. Louis. Yeah. And talking about money, we can remind our spectators once again what is at stake today and how how much the players has have already collected on the way here, on the way to the final that we are watching. Uefan and Katerina, they both have uh, similar wins up to the point, but right now the winner is going to take an additional $6,000 and the player is going to split six more thousand by win percentage. So a lot to fight for. And what is amazing, that smarter chess predictions are quite accurate actually half a point difference the first uh, segment was four and a half to four and a half while the second five and a half to four and a half and what are we gonna see now the final the final segment 30 minutes of one plus one time control amazing tension and who is gonna be named the winner of the women's speed chess championship 2022 two amazing players very strong players and well we're gonna we're gonna see we're gonna see the winner yeah and they Pretty haven't soon. started their game yet it's hard mm -hmm. to say who's the favorite in the bullets um how you found can definitely adjust i mean we've seen her do that against gunina she, she held her own um, she can play fast, even though, sure, she also likes to think. Um, so I, it's hard to say who's the favorite in this portion. There's just so little separating them. If someone wins by two, you know, if Katarina wins just two extra games, that's it. She's the champion. So um, I think I think anything is possible here. Yeah, anything is possible. Definitely the play initiative, initiative is on Hui Fan's side after the victory, quite a smooth victory in in two last games, actually, in two last games of the segment. So it was pretty equal. Katerina, I mean, White was struggling, but two last games, yeah, went in, finished in Hoi Fine's favor, and now we're back on track. So the players started their match. G3 again. Wow, Katerina. Uh, Katerina somehow likes her position in this system. Let's see what she prepared in this five-minute break, whether it was possible to prepare anything at all but i'm sure she did correct she would correct mm -hmm. her uh play maybe well maybe we'll see some other plans yeah we've seen this position a lot and happy going into the king's indian attack um right now aha uh -huh. oh 95 right so i bet katarina looked at something while <laughs> how Ho you fan didn't and she might pay a price for that because uh, Katarina definitely does take the time to look at things in between the segments, at least she did in the previous ones. And right now, already her position is, uh, Ho's, Ho's position is looking pretty problematic. I mean, she's in a nasty pin. Mm -hmm. Well, knight f6, bishop e5. Yeah, or even rook e5 can be, can be played. Mm -hmm. And it is actually played indeed. Uh, what what is gonna bring us all those exchanges in the center of some kind of end games? Yeah, so she's not actually up material, but Black's King is uh, is more open, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and uh, that's gonna be a long term factor in this heavy piece end game. Also, I would say this pawn is annoyingly weak. Uh, this pawn is now quite weak, mm -hmm. right? So Katarina just very confidently. Um, I mean, opening up the Black King, and there's no way Black's taking that pawn. Yes, she tries to open up the A file, and if Black takes on before, White is gonna take on before, and it's gonna open the rook on A1, which is gonna look at the pawn on A7. So not so easy, not so easy. Even though there are not not many pieces left on the board. But somehow, as you can see, white can also switch from the A file to E file. It doesn't mean yeah. that uh, white will stay there forever. Uh, white I think, can... mm -hmm. yeah, I think Ho needs to make a major adjustment and kind of realize that Katarina has prepared this and just veer away, like no more repetition of the same, uh, same 
opening, uh, especially doing something so risky like taking that pawn on e5. All right. Oof. The king marches to d6. Uh, well, it shouldn't be good. One second, just one second left for her. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, she does get an additional one second for every move she makes, but it's just too bad. The checkmate yeah. is coming. Yeah, this is a disastrous game that she kind of gave away without a big need. And gave and away in the sense, six. yeah, mm -hmm. gave away in the sense that like this was Katarina's preparation and and uh, Ho just you know played right into it. Not a great thing to do in bullet chess where you're not going to have time to calculate anything. Mm -hmm. So um, okay, so now the match is even. That's fine. Uh, you know, Katarina gets the point back after giving up a couple. You know, I think of not super necessary points and. Mm -hmm. um yeah we'll see what what this game brings and uh something is relatively uh, fresh on the board but they are playing very fast some kind of scotch game with uh white playing c4 queen b3 rook d4 d1 putting the pressure on the d file and the queen is there right the queen is on d8 and you always have to watch out for bishop takes h7 threats um where to put this queen to c8 yeah, mm -hmm. I guess you're right. Now, knight takes c3, we got to consider bishop h7. So Katarina goes for a solid move, but it closes her bishop, so it's a little unfortunate. Her structure is a bit worse, and uh, white might... Should white have taken the pawn? Okay, maybe. Maybe she could have considered that, but she didn't. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Bishop f4, using the, the fact that the knight is pinned, and... Um... It's not only pinned, but also, yes, it can be attacked all the time. That's the problem with all those pinned pieces. You can put as many pressure, as much pressure on them as you can. It's not so easy to win win this pawn here because B2 is also going to hang. And of course, this diagonal mm -hmm. is quite nice for black. So um, probably yeah. we can say that black managed to unpin herself right yep. so now we got a completely equal position after queen takes b2 for example uh Ooh, okay eight instead sure okay. you can do it yeah you're still gonna win the b2 pawn i think but i'm not really sure why you needed to do that but mm -hmm. okay well the time is different it's quite significant so who uh, i did get an additional 15 seconds and it oh, might nice. might you can't win the bishop because of the back rank issues. Mm -hmm. King of one can be played. Mm -hmm. Bishop yeah. e3 is also looks pretty logical. And will black face any problems because that pawn is on a dark square? Yeah, there might be. After rook d1, for example, if we exchange, white's yeah. king is uh, so much better placed than his king's that black's, uh, black's king. And uh, well, why not? That's why black did not exchange the rooks yeah this was a purely defensive move by white just guarding that pawn um h5 oh no no h5 okay bishop c5 is fine i thought h5 at some point could happen but rook d8 rook c8 mm, g4 it... maybe no okay King here. okay rook d8 bishop f8 probably i don't know why but okay it's we already far away uh, looks like a totally drawn position. Especially after a4. Yes, after a4, we can yeah. agree that it's heading to a draw. Oh, and the time wait. is equal. They do play. They do keep playing. Maybe they don't know where the draw button is. <laughs> yes, sometimes. But they found, yeah, they found the way to make a draw. Nice. All right, so Katarina is white and we're going to see the same g3 move from her oh no no uh, not. how are you fun <laughs> although it's possible to play g3 after a6 here for example but we won't see it anyway back to the sicilian grounds mm -hmm. the exact same line that uh, players already discussed in the first segment of the match was uh, six yeah yeah, it was white castling before. Okay, we've seen this knight on before. In the very first game, I think, uh, was the Sicilian yep. played. Yep. All right, rook c8. Ah, uh, yeah, king b1. Bishop okay, seven, That's going to be sharp. That's going to be tense. What else to expect from a Sicilian battle? d5. Yeah, there you go. That's She likes that move, so 
sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't, but she's just going for it. Uh, the Valbar, yeah, the Valbar doesn't like the moment. I think oh. he's going to try to take the pawn, but it's kind of risky. I don't know if she's going to go for it. Yeah, I don't know. It's a little risky to take a pawn like that. And Katerina often plays h4, which feels a little bit slow. I remember mm -hmm. one game where she did play h4 instead of g5, and she had those um, connection issues, and uh, she spoiled some advantage. But now, okay, we see that the Valbar is jumping like crazy up and down every move. It's very hard to commentate. I mean, in terms of the exact moves, of course, there is... A there are many, many tactical nuances and ideas, and it's very complicated. Uh, rook takes b3, king k2. What's what's going to happen there? You I have no clue. survive, right? I mm -hmm. mean, you really want to take that pawn. You really do. But after king a2, it's annoying. So she doesn't. She just makes a safe move, which I think is fine for bullet, right? Good, good idea, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, don't commit to anything. She's a little behind on the clock. She needs to be careful. 96, maybe. Uh -huh. yeah. yep. And, ooh. Oof, it Katarina is a crazy attack. game. Looks dangerous. It looks like she got to the... She captured the pawn. She just captured, bravely captured the pawn on F7. Okay, this is going to be painful. Oh, mm -hmm. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. It changes every single move. Oh, yeah, maybe I would probably changes. still try that move. Mm, wow. Opening up the A file, it was not that obvious. Rook A8. Right. Wow. Maybe trading the rooks would be nice. King E7. She's going to King E7. Seven. The king in the center. Getting yeah. ready Get for an end game. Oh, no. I don't. Okay. Oh, she was afraid of Rook D6. Yeah, that was a big one. Oh, okay. Rook need D8. To push out yeah. for tactics. I mean, White sort of has an initiative because of that pin, but it can also peter out. Like it's not really that clear anymore without the rooks on the board. Now it looks safe for black. I mean, it looks safe for black. Yeah, because... queen, queen e2. This is a good one. Pin as many of white's pieces as you can. <laughs> With one move. Yeah, because just, just so you, they can't move as many and threaten you. That's what I would do. And I also like to centralize the queen. So it would have been really good to have the queen. Queen e5 then. Queen e5 is the mm -hmm. move to make. Okay, and finally, now we're going to see the pawn races. Okay, White yep. managed to uh, win the pawn on b5. Of wow, course. queen c4. I mean, she... exchanging. She did offer Ooh. an exchange, and Black did not exchange it. No, because wow. I, would, I would think that the side pawn is much more, I mean. King here, I have no idea what's going on. I guess it's gonna, it should be a draw, but anything yeah, can happen. It's, ne it's never going to be a draw, no? <laughs> it's know. never going to be a draw. I don't know. I don't know. With those balance. pawns. Wait, yeah, there you go. You just gonna win those pawns. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit draw. pessimistic about this uh, draw outcome, but yeah. Okay, there you go. You were right. 94, right. and I take g5. Nice hard fought game. I mean, wow, that was Second exciting. draw in a row? What, what, I think what, so. What mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Ho was under a lot of pressure in this game. Uh, she defended herself well, and at some point, Katarina defended herself well. So nice, nice game by these uh, players. It was a crazy battle. What is this line they're playing about? I don't really. So knight, I mean, why doesn't go knight c3? They play for c4, right? Mm. Immediately. I haven't so, seen such a line. Should I predict? Yes, please do. That's... You're you were very <laughs> you've been very good with your predictions in this match. I'm going to predict that someone is going to win this match by one point. In the very last game, yeah. right? Like, like it just there's going to be a one-point difference. I don't know. I know it's a little bit of a stretch, but it's always fun to make predictions. Okay. Are we going to see the Armageddon? That's, <laughs> That's <laughs> That would be fun, too. That would be a lot of yeah. fun. We, we, haven't seen, we haven't seen a single Armageddon, I think, in this, in this match, in, in this edition of Women's Speed Chess Championship. I don't think so. All right, so uh, Ho Yifan actually has a nice position here. Yeah, very Beautiful nice. Beautiful bishops. Um, yeah, I love bishops like that, pointing at the opponent's king. That's like mm -hmm. my kind of thing. Beautiful. Yeah. And you also can ignore ignore the fact uh, that black played queen b4. Exactly, because queen d4, bishop h7. Wow, I'd love to get, to, to, to get such bishops in my yeah, games. 
Does she care to put money on it? Yeah, one dollar is my typical bet. I'm willing to put a dollar on that. Uh, okay, now White needs to somehow, you know, regroup her ba battery, a bishop and queen battery somehow. I was thinking about queen e2, queen f3, queen f5, but probably it's a move in the wrong direction. Yeah, do we want to push there or do they just go rook c8 and then we have problems with knight c3? Maybe we won't. I mean, queen b3, but again, yeah. okay. She decides to play on a5, a5. Good positional move. Hold on. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it gets us mated, but like this is definitely a good positional move. Oof, uh, b4. What a brave decision. She yeah. doesn't care about the rook on e8. I would, you know, definitely move my queen mm. away from the e file. But... She, she loses maybe some part of her advantage. I definitely don't like that the bishop pair has been traded for white. But okay, she has bishop versus knight. She has the queen side majority with this pawn. So bishop you gotta f5. prefer white. Mm, I would have played bishop f5. Okay, she managed to regroup her pieces, but unfortunately the bishop is no longer on d4. So no really point of uh, uh, looking at this h7 square since the knight on f6 protects it very well. Yeah, very tricky position. I would say to play for both sides. Mm -hmm. Rookie one. Yeah, don't step here. Okay. No. And again, queen takes a three, bishop at seven. Well, it's looking it's looking better and better for oh what black. what okay. she just gave up a piece queen. for ah. nothing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She just gave yes. it up for nothing. That was so well. Insane. There were games where Katerina gave up her pieces, so it's like a yeah payback. All right, so that puts Katerina one point ahead. Okay, holy fun. It's time to start to equalize the match. Right, right, because there should be just one point difference. We remember the prediction. Right. We got to keep my uh, reputation as the oracle. Okay, and <laughs> we, we do see the same exact position. So b6, knight d2, bishop b7, knight e4, that's all we're going to see, right? Uh, some kind of theoretical discussion taking place here. Oh no, she's back in this thing, but she has such bad memories from that other bullet game. Um, that's a little scary. Mm -hmm. Well, she won't be taking this pawn in this game for sure. You'll see that pawn will stay there for a while. Okay. Opposite 94. side four castles. 94, 96, right. But after 94, maybe after all, it's possible to 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 take only five, no? Don't you think so? H6. Yeah, H6. Okay. H5. So... Or what? H5, G5 anyway, right? Or, yeah, H5 makes sense, I guess. Although, but I don't G5. Know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I said G5. H5, but then I kind of calculated the line. It was G5, H takes uh, G6, F takes G6, and I didn't like mm. White's position. Maybe I was wrong. Okay, I mean, this definitely looks annoying. It actually tries to win a piece right now. Yeah, just trapping this bishop on the four. Okay, the thing is, like, I would have such bad memories of this capture that I would... I don't know. Just not consider it. Yeah. Well, maybe you can because you have G5 later. So wow, look at that. It. Look at that, G5. How many, I mean, <laughs> one, two, three, four. Sometimes you're not sure how many Yeah, night attacks. there, night there. Yes. So it looks like white picked up a pawn, but of course, you know, there's some open lines against the king. So black just gave up this pawn, right? They just... Yep. They did. Oof, 96, they Valbor could eight. Eight. Yeah. yeah. All right, attack on the H file. Huh, it's coming. Queen F6. It's coming, but it, I mean, it's not the end of the world. Ooh, apparently, this is a bad move. I have no idea. Oh, well, yeah, I do know. Because it just gives up a pawn. Yeah, because a, a million white pieces attack that. Mm -hmm. That was a bad idea. Oh, no. But maybe that was her plan. That was Hoi Fine's plan. She wanted to exchange the slight squared bishops. Uh, and... Yeah, no, I don't think there's any plan. <laughs> I think that she just miscalculated. Oof. What's going on? What's going on? Four seconds on Hoi Fine's clock. Okay, okay, good. Good exchange for white. Yeah, Katerina is going to take a two-point lead. Yeah, I would say this is still not so clear. Oh, that check is painful, man. Too bad. Too bad. Time to... That was painful. Time to get back into the match. Whoa, what? Well, bishop... Yeah. Six, some brilliancy here. Bishop d5. Oof, what was that? Nice. Okay. Wait, wait I, actually, I don't understand. Like, uh, why... oh, Wow, she's playing ah, so well. But she ran out of time, yeah. yeah nice stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, 13-11. 13-11. Right. 
12 minutes. That line is dangerous for Ho. She needs to make some adjustments to that. All right. Mm -hmm. This one, she hasn't really been getting very much out of the opening. So I think she's well, it's a little play. bit different with the knight yeah. in c3, rook b8, because in the first game that she played, it was a different story. She played bishop e6, and somehow she did not completely equalize, I think. Now it's um, more double h I like this uh, line with rook b8, rook b6, bishop b7. I played it several times myself. It gives uh, black quite a counterplay if one day the diagonal opens up if black plays d4 then the bishop starts playing on b7 you know it can be pretty unpleasant yeah i think that this decision to go for the scotch four nights made sense to end the, the three minute portion right when things were really not going well for her in the bullet i don't know that i would just keep playing into this um, she she can she's diverse enough to be able to play other things right so maybe just switch something completely go knight f3 you know c4 she can do it so I think I would have made that choice rather than going for these like more theoretical lines. No, it's hard to say now knight h5 right. Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, how do you know what's what will work out? Yeah, well, we're Oof, this, look at that. Really that's a blunder, and now Katerina can win another one, and that's gonna almost end the match. No, three, three games. Yeah, she's three gonna be difference. wow. That's huge. They were just tied like a second ago. Yeah, yeah, that's what happens when you just you know some something happens. You keep you lose this concentration, momentum, and that's it. That's it. And Katerina is not gonna stop. Rook e five, rook g five with the bishop on b seven looking directly at g2 yeah and look at the time situation also just terrible for home everything is bad for white for yeah. white and i'm not yeah it's almost over actually the match is almost over she well, needs to got... resign and try to win back One. yeah she still has she can she can win three games in a row but it's gonna be hard does she have time for that 10 minutes she does Ten, yeah. minutes. Mm -hmm. i would say she theoretically has time she doesn't really want to resign here because, okay, things can still happen, but... Yes, but okay. Now she... d6 and that's it, right? Or no. Yeah, it's check... Bishop h2, yeah. Yeah, checkmate coming with rookie one. Yeah. Okay. Time. Wow. Time start. Ten what, minutes. Uh, what a strike. Three in She's a row. She's got to win three in a row. She needs to make some changes. D6. No. No. Don't go into this I one think, again. I mean, that this position... That she's getting uh she's playing with uh with black now right this kind yeah. of position it's she changed good. things up she didn't play d5 she played mm -hmm. d6 that's important that's an important change good mm -hmm. okay different pawn structure different ideas yeah. so let's see what's what happens but definitely a must win situation for hoya fine because suddenly, suddenly she was leading the match, but Katerina fought it back once three in a row, and yeah. it's looking pretty desperate for how you find. It's really been three in a row, right? Yep, yep. Right. Lost three Incredible. games. Something wow. didn't or stopped working out for who you find. And yeah, I mean, it can change so fast. Yeah, I think if Katerina wins this one, that's it. Of course, that's going to be it. Yeah. Well, so in order to save the match, who if I need three, I need to to win three games in a row. Yeah, back back to back mm -hmm. games. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Anything is possible, but yeah, here it doesn't look very good. Here it doesn't look very good for Black in terms of winning this game. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two strong bishops. White has. Knight b2, okay, at least she won back a pawn. Maybe knight back to d3, okay. I mean, it's mm -hmm. still playable. Still but, playable. Yeah, but... it's, it's hard. I mean, you can take the pawn, it's fine decision, but then you're just trading down. It will, what else to do? Yeah. Katerina is playing very fast. So she's putting pressure on time mm -hmm. as well. Maybe knight c4 in the end. Oh, bishop h3. Bishop h3, yeah. Should watch out for this bishop. Bishop a7, and then rook e7. If you take the pawn, maybe there is a little skewer. 
yeah, you can give a check on DA, check on E4, but it doesn't look very good to tell you the truth. I mean, it looks scary, but Katerina yeah. does take this pawn. Bishop E4 and F5. then F5. Ooh, she definitely looks scary. Wow. But she did go for it. I mean, Bishop D6, Rook C1, King H2, what's going wow, on? Wow, isn't there like checkmate with Knight G? No, there's no, because you're... Bishop... There's a checkmate, the bishop is oh, alive, but Knight F2, Knight yeah. E4. So... All right, so we are going to, I think we have at least a chance... Listen, to, chance, uh, to finish the chance. match with this one point difference yes yeah we we really need her we really need her to use that time advantage that she's got right now knight of three is a big threat it's mm -hmm. tough for white knight h3 okay simple just Rook takes a2 yeah, yeah 100 percent. okay i would go I, oh i would i would have taken it the other way but okay this is should be enough to win right yeah but it just it's longer it's yeah, also important I, how fast you win not uh, it's kind yeah. of longer. I'm really white. a little scared because, you know, you, you might not win with two G pawns. With two G pawns, no. But so I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't like that at all that she went for this. I don't okay. like this. Well, oh. and then a four. No, it's but winning. It's, it's winning? still winning. Yes. Is it? Yeah. 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 It's still winning, but, but you, you can't gotta move be the careful. Rook. That's the problem, actually. You can't move this rook. Wait, you know that it might not be winning because you can't. Put the rook well, king g6, position. king f5, and then if you go to e2, and yeah, then you cover they're probably f... gonna keep oh, it's gonna be a draw if she keeps. Oh repeating. man, it's <sighs> well, I would do the same with the king on g2, but okay, king d2. oh, now king d2, probably rook c8, oh, rook c3. Oh, she missed that. Okay, now this, ah, and, I'm not sure about g3. Okay, okay, now I think she'll win. Yeah, That's now still. slowly but surely. Wait, rook what? d4, rook d4. Yeah, she needs to go king c3. What is she doing? King c3, rook d4 or something. I don't know. It's Try to yeah. so hard. You know, once, I mean, in title Tuesdays, I had three uh, rook end games like this in one tournament with two extra pawns, and it's right. so hard to win Okay, she's second. going to f1. Good idea. Oof. There you go. Oof, nice so square scary. for the king. Z2, let's go. All right. Ah. <sighs> but it's still, it took her how many minutes? Come on, Katerina, time. play, 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 play. A few more seconds, play, play. Okay, the checkmate is coming. Yeah, yeah checkmate is. in one. All right. Oh, but it was very close to draw, actually. Rook C4. Wow, it's on... there's just enough time for her to try to, to, to do this. Okay, okay. Right. Are we going to see a comeback? Are we going to see a comeback? Okay, back to this, the... The, the Italian, yeah. yeah. What did she prepare against this H6 G5 plan? Oh, I don't think she prepared anything. I think she's just well, gonna improvise. She, <laughs> she might end up in a trouble then, because it's a very straightforward plan, and it brings black an attack. What else to hope for? Okay, well, Bishop C2, okay. and she didn't play G5 probably because of D4. Well, there are some nuances, so or. Maybe just because Katerina decided to um, to switch. Okay, rook e8, d5, another plan. Some theoretical bat bat battle. Yeah, so we're in a situation where any more wins for Logno puts uh, how you, how you fawn out of reach. Even a draw. I think yeah. even a draw would do. She's really in a must win. We, we have two games left, I think. That's... That's one yeah. game and then another one. Right. And Koyofine is losing two points. So in order to fight back, to bring right. the match back, she needs to win this one and then to win another one. Yeah, so... Is that a very good position out of oh, the Oh, okay. Well, maybe, you know, after... Mm, okay, hmm. sure. Rook D1. She captured immediately. I, I was thinking about Rook D1. It was not so clear for me what Black would do after Rook D1. But All okay. right. Well, maybe like this and like this, try to play against the pawns. Of course, they want to go there. It's kind of an annoying plan. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe, I, I think black is solid. It's, it's a very annoying plan to push up that pawn and trade off things. But okay, anything can happen. Anything yeah. is still doable here. Bishop d3, keep some pieces on the board. Rook c1, bishop c4. There you go. Rook c1, rook c1. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can do that because... Your knight will be able to take if they take on a2. Queen c4. Okay, Katerina is trying to exchange as many pieces as possible. Well, rook c1 giving up the d file completely mm. once and forever. Nice. Right? I like b4. Well, queen. 
win b5. Mm -hmm. Pawn. And another end game. What about this pawn? What about rook c5? There are many questions. Rook d1 now. Rook d1 with counterplay. Yeah, rook d1 is annoying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It can be saved. Yeah, it can be saved for white. It's not as bad. F3? Yeah, F3 and then rook b5. Maybe Seems... king e2. I like king e2 and king e3. But king e2, rook e2, check. No, oh, f3 yeah. looks nice. c6 probably okay. I would have played. I would have played c6. I would have tried to keep uh, my pawn on b5. Well, now it's it's a very good uh, chance for Katerina. Ah, wait, wait, wait. Who is fun is playing white. Who yeah. is fun is playing I, I forgot. I thought that uh, Katerina is playing white. Uh, still. Okay. All right. H4. He's up two pawns. I mean, the clock situation is okay. She's going to go to h2, right? h2. She knows that. Knight d3. Oh, knight, that's a very important move. Knight e5, right? probably. Yeah, rook d7. Rook d7. Okay. So she's holding on. King of two. King of two. Put the king on e3. And she has a time advantage, yes. which is very important. King of four. King e5. King of six. King d4. Even better. Go. Even better. King c4, I agree. Ooh, yeah, keep that five. pawn moving. King b6. Yeah, get that king out of the range of the knight. Far away from that knight. Mm -hmm. That's the best place to be. Ah! Ah, she missed it. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. She missed this pawn. Oh, ah, rook, no, rook. no, rook before. What's what's happening? What's happening with us? Well, we have to make this, you know, we have to make this a close match somehow. Rook like d8. Rook d8. Come on, come on, come on. Just don't, don't. Oh, she keeps on playing. Oh, but... wow. There's a minute 12, but she needs to, so she has a minute. No. All right. All right. Okay. The, the decisive one. Well, it's not going to end with a one point difference, though. It's not going to end it's with not a gonna, one Well, point. yeah, it's not going to end right. That's that's right. Well, but it if, might be. I don't know. I, I don't know what well, the if they make is. a draw. If yes. they make a draw. Ah, yeah, exactly. That's so, one scenario. Okay, Bishop no, no, but I think Your favorite like, browser. Yeah, we're going to see we're going to see uh an arm an Armageddon. Mm -hmm. okay, I I've updated see. my prediction. But uh uh, like I'm not sure we haven't discussed it yet. What's gonna follow in case of a uh, one mm, like a oh, I'm sorry, score? We're not an Armageddon. We're gonna see that tie break. It's that one yeah, one exactly. plus one tie break. Exactly. That's but yeah. okay, let's focus on this game first because I uh, many things yeah. can happen. It's a Anything. very sharp Sicilian battle, very double edged. Of course, white is pushing. White has a great position, but black has uh, her chances. Her okay, favorite D5. move, d5. She loves that. Yeah, the center. Bishop is coming to a3, probably at some point to b4. Okay, not covering the a file. Queen a5, preparing queen a5, and then trying to attack the queen side because b3 weakened, weakened the position, right? Weakened black squares, so weakened the knight on uh, c3. And here, what black is gonna do? Uh-huh. Well nice, nice. Uh nice. Wow, knight takes a four, queen takes g seven. What a position. Ooh. Queen takes a four. But Ooh. it's not over, guys. It's it's wow. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I have to say it feels easier for black to play. Like, of course, it's really sharp, but mm -hmm. I didn't like this move. I don't know why. I guess the it bishop covers the bishop. Yeah, it okay. covers the bishop, maybe. Well, wow. Katerina goes bad? all in. Queen C3. Maybe. What? Maybe because of I don't okay. know. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, yeah, and now G5, it's good. Yeah, now it's good. Lots okay. of pawns for for Ho Yifan. Lots of pawns, but the king is in the center. The king's king in the, is center. the center. Yeah, she needs to be very careful here. Rook e one, rook d five, c four. She's trying to go like rook e seven, e five. I mean, I I know that's a weird plan. C four at some point. Wow. Played. Super tricky because Black's king is still in danger. Yeah, so it's all going to come rooks. down to queen g5, queen g5. Back, back. Back, mm -hmm. go to trade. Uh, oh. What? What? Oh, no, man. This is, who knows what's going to happen now? The king is in Well, some it doesn't look good for black. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't look it good doesn't. for black. She got that queen in. Bad idea. Bad idea. Queen g5. Bring the queen. Time in. is up. Time is up. So actually, draw would do for Katerina. Queen b8, queen b4. Yeah. She could have given a few checks and see what... Uh, black is about to. All right, this is so so sharp. This is so sharp. I don't. This is definitely not going to end in a draw. Mm. 
E2. I don't All like right. it. Ah, well, I, now I like it because there is no rook D2 apparently because I, I saw that rook D2 Maybe is coming. Here, sure. Trade, trade G5. Oh, no, no G5. No G5. Oh, no. All right. It's Why fine. no? Why no? How to relate uh, what's happening? Uh, no, no, from the point of view of Black winning this. Come on, come like... on, let us make fast fast moves. Why are you faster? Four, four pawns Two. against four. This endgame is crazy. That's Just four. don't don't run out of time, please. Wow, what's going on here? G4? G4. Yeah, come on! Oh, no! Oh! Oh! She forgot about time. Oh. Well, oh, no. that's what to say. Oh, you no. Track on time. Well done for Katerina winning this match. Yeah. That was a, like, a oh. very exciting battle. A very exciting oh. battle. Well, we wished for it. Yeah, and that was, was decided in yeah. the very last moment. It's painful because yeah. Black, I mean, both players had uh, their chances, of course. But there can be only one winner. There can be only one winner. And that winner for this year is Katerina Lagno. Uh, we congratulate uh, Katerina with her victory, and we're waiting for her to come to the studio to yeah. ask her some questions about her um, epic match. Yeah. Um, well, I the, the, what I thought about was how we saw the statistics. I think it was by in, in, the insights, and there was that statistic that Hal loses more frequently on time. It was about a 5% difference there. But it was something that, you know, we kind of picked up on and that it was more likely to happen. I don't think Katarina lost on time at all today, but uh, how did have that problem a few times and sad that it came up in such a key game. But I think the players, you know, they did amazing to give us a really close match. Lots of excitement. Um, yeah, so I enjoyed that. Yeah, me too. And I hope our spectators did enjoy it as well. And again, we are waiting for Katerina to join us. And um, we're looking forward to congratulating her on a, on a great match. Yeah. So...
We're closing in on the chess.com global championship with $1 million at stake on September 14th. Watch some of the greatest players on the planet compete for title of chess.com global champion and some serious bragging rights. Type Xclamp CGC in chat for more. And here we are with the winner of the Women's Speech Chess Championship 2022, Katarina Logno just defeated the top uh, woman player in the world, Ho Yi Fan. Katarina, <clears throat> what are your feelings about this match? Well, very happy and very tired, <laughs> both. Well, I, well, I, I, uh, I think everything was quite good from the start, but then I got disconnected and somehow I just couldn't, for, for two games, I couldn't put myself together after that and uh well and i understand it happens and for chinese players it happens quite often but uh, i was like uh, like not today not now <laughs> like, <laughs> so but uh yes and then uh, i i don't remember the score already but it was always yes uh, it was a close match very close match i i i got very tired uh, in last um I was very tired last uh, two games of three plus one mm -hmm. i just landed my pieces everywhere on b4 h6 my rook on a8 so i just wanted uh, to play bullet as uh, you know as solid as i can just to to, to <laughs> not to keep my pieces i mean in one move <laughs> So, you, and... But you managed to perform very well in the bullet uh, section, and we were wondering what what was going on with the uh, white uh, with white color in the three plus one segment because it seemed that uh, both you and uh, Huya Fang were losing all the games playing with white, but you you both kept in, insisting on playing the same openings all the time. Uh, you... Well. Uh... Yes, probably it was it was stupid, but <laughs> I just I just I felt that it should be better for white. I I mean this uh, uh, setup with G three when uh, I close my center and uh, I had this feeling and I just uh, I I couldn't you know stop to to play it so I just wanted and when I had a break, my husband finally he told me where <laughs> I can improve that the pawn on e5 is not hanging. So it was a very important moment and I won the first game of bullet section. And probably uh, we prepared more with black than with white, so that's why it worked better with black. So probably also, <laughs> that, that was the point. So Katarina, was your husband watching the whole match? Yes, yes, he, he well, uh, he, he didn't have a choice, but he he was interested also. <laughs> yeah. So so I know you mentioned sometimes like you check some things on the uh, in the database between uh, the segments, but today you just you didn't really have to refer to the computer because uh, you just got some help uh, from from your husband. Yes. Yes. Uh, today, um, okay. When you start play uh, bullet chess you don't have so so much time and uh, you just uh, want to play something uh, you're similar with so but uh, this first game uh, she like she kept repeated this line and uh, i was almost sure that she was going to take this pawn on e5 so it was important to have this queen h5 move to, um, the yeah. pro move so and when i won this game i felt like okay it's uh, not so bad, not so bad anymore. What was your favorite game from this match? Oh, well, I'm not so fan of my games. <laughs> so I I don't know. Well, probably some of uh, uh, Spanish from first games when I pushed G5, G4 and uh, uh, wanted to make uh, her king. Probably this one, but I I understand that uh, it's not a clean one, so... <laughs> we enjoyed your game with a dark square strategy where you played, you first sacrifice a pawn by playing c4, then you sacrifice an exchange, rook takes b3, yes, but that was, was amazing. 
Yes, but I was worse uh, when I blundered. Uh, I think I, I blundered something that I had to to exchange my light squared bishops. I was just, uh, you know, hoping for just not to lose immediately because uh, no counterplay, nothing, just waiting for 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 something from her side. And when she gave me this opportunity, of course, I decided that it works. It doesn't, but I have to play it. And <laughs> actually, it worked quite well. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Well, congratulations once again. Uh, what are your plans for the upcoming months? Any tournaments coming up? Well, still waiting for some news. Uh, I mean, about candidates' tournaments. So it's going to be a bit uh, already. <laughs> you know, when you wait, wait, wait. It's, yeah, it's I can long, relate. Right? <laughs> yes, we're in the same, on the same plate. It's been uh, yes, quite so painful. Just, you, you don't know uh, anymore what to expect. So so waiting for some news at least. And uh, the nec my next tournament is in uh, Astana, the Sultan, <clears throat> the first leg of uh, Women's Grand Prix. Oh, that's coming up this month, right? Uh, yes, 17th of September, so and still two weeks. Um, and so the candidates, uh, is it like they have the first part of it set for October, but you guys are playing like in another, the, on the other dates? Is that what's going on? Actually, we, we don't know. <laughs> we would like to, to have some information, but we are waiting and uh, nothing. Yeah, that's that's quite a sad story. Yeah, they split. Yeah, well, they sad. changed the format and they announced uh, the dates and the location of one group. And right. not the other group and Katerina and I were both in the pool B. So ah. for pool B, we were expected to see, um, to hear from Fido the exact location and time and everything by August 1st. Well, still waiting, but no, it just it shouldn't be like this. Just it's, um, well, there are many yeah. things, uh, this year that shouldn't be like this. <laughs> what to do, yeah. Aha, uh -huh. so basically, we have like the first pool is set for October. And that's going to yeah. take place. Uh-huh. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Well, hopefully they will find, give you that information soon, guys. Yes. But we are waiting from 1st of August. So it's time to have at least something. Yeah. <laughs> a new deadline, at least a new deadline. To oh, yes. For, for example. <laughs> be nice. right. Yes. October 1, uh, you know, something. But what to do? Anyway, it doesn't spoil the fact that you won the Women's Speed Chess Championship 2022. What an amazing tournament, an amazing match. Congratulations with that. And yes, with you. all your plans and tournaments that are coming up. Yes, to you too. Thanks, Katarina. Thank Congratulations, you. and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Alison. All right, Alexandra. So that uh, that finishes the 2022 Women's Speed Chess Championship. We have a new winner this year. Uh, Ho Yifa was able to defend her title, and we have a very deserved uh, new champion. Exactly, indeed. Uh, well, I enjoyed this tournament very much, as always, playing and commentating. And again, thanks. Uh, uh, a big thank uh, to Chesscom for organizing this event and. I'm always looking for more action. And uh, as we announced, uh, there's going to be a chess.com global championship. It's starting already on September 14th, a series of exciting matches with the finals live in uh, Canada. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that's right. $1 million at stake. And they're playing first online qualifiers and finally the top 16 will make it to the live finals in toronto so um that's going to take place in early november november 2nd will be the start of that so for now we're doing qualifiers um and if you guys want to watch more chess today we got the beginning of the sinkfield cup actually i'll be doing commentary on that on hikaru's channel and it's probably my first day ever in my life where i will be doing two sessions of commentary in what one day, a day. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's a lot it's a lot it's i had to get up today uh should i tell you the ungodly hour i i got up at it was 5 30 in the morning yeah but well that's nice i think that nowadays we can play chess we can commentate play so, uh, chess we can enjoy it in different formats and forms and online over the board and um, 
thank you guys for watching and more chess is coming up our way yeah see you guys for the sinkfield cup and have a great day everyone